Hello, doctors. So welcome again for another session. This time it is about UPSC a CMS 2023 recall questions. To my surprise, almost 35 questions have been asked from microbiology. 28 or nearly 28 questions are directly asked and rest of the questions are integrated with either medicine, gynae or pharmacology, PSM type. So it looks uh, a lot of important questions we have here and the question standard is almost equal to your uh, you know, need PG or next exam, we could say, or also FMG and INICT also. So let's start the discussion now. Okay. The first question, if you see the first question, the question was asked, the gas gangrene. The gas gangrene resulting in crepitus in tissue and a sweet smelling, sweet smelling, fine, a smelling exudate. You know that whenever this thing comes, what do you will think? Your answer should be, what is your answer? Most of you know that whenever the gas gangrene comes, it is your closed stridium perfringens. The other name is also called as Welchai, right? It's called Welchai. Closed stridium perfringens or Welchai is the answer. So how to remember this? Yeah, let's go to this picture. Let's talk about Closed stridium perfringens. I'm seeing in these years, it has been frequently asked. Okay, so this is the gas gangrene. This picture is the gas gangrene. If you see, there is a gas and there is a gangrene. Okay, there's a gangrene. The black color tissue means it's if the tissue has got gangrene. The only thing when I see gangrene, what comes to my mind is this one. This is what? Nagarjun, right? So I, I'm just going to come now, okay? This is the clue how I'm going to remember. First of all, Nagarjun. Why I kept the name Nagarjun? It's very simple. Nagarjun, in the movie, what happened? While shooting for a movie, he had a gangrene. So why Nagarjun? There can be any actress who's getting, yes, he's getting gangrene. I know, but I'll give you the clue why it was Nagarjun. First thing, look at him. This is, what is this one? He, uh, why I kept Nagarjun name? The reason is very simple. It's because of Nagler's reaction. Nagler's reaction. Okay, Nagler's reaction. That's the reason why I kept the name Nagarjun. And Nagarjun is what? He is Mr. Perfect. He is Mr. Perfect. Okay, he is Mr. Perfect. That means why he is Mr. Perfect and also is Mr. Well. You know, I call him Mr. Well. Good guy. Okay. That means the idea is Mr. Perfect for Velka. The idea is Clostridium perfringens. The Clostridium, the costive agent is Clostridium perfringens. Nagarjun means Clostridium perfringens or Velchai, the other name. You should come in your mind. Okay. So he's Mr. Perfect, Mr. That's the name. Okay, Mr. Perfect. And one more thing, he has a he has a gun. What is that gun name? Lesithines gun. You see this gun? This is Lesithines gun. Okay. Lesi. Tines gun, Lesithines gun. Why is it Lesithines gun? Because this is also called Alpha. He's Alpha man, right? He's Alpha man, Alpha man, and he has Lesithines gun because this is the main virulence factor. Lesithines and Alpha man means it is the main toxin, main virulence factor. It is the main virulence factor. Okay, remember he has a gun. Okay, fine. And the gun, he always has a target. So what is that it's called? Target hemolysis. Target hemolysis. So before going that, why I said this one, why I say Mr. Nagler's reaction, this is the Nagler's reaction. You see, this is an egg yolk agar. This is the egg yolk agar. You take an egg yolk agar and then what you do, you streak your perfringence like this. And if you see opalescence like this, like this, you see an opalescence like this, then that is positive. Okay, that means it forms opalescence. But on the other side, if there is antitoxin, then you launch the opalescence. That means this lecithinase, what happened, toxin or alpha toxin, alpha man, I call him alpha man because the toxin is alpha toxin, other name is lecithinase, which is responsible for causing the gas gangrene. Okay, so it caused the egg yolk. So this question can come. Negligence reaction is frequently asked question. It's a type of neutralization reaction and you, you do it in egg yolk. Okay, that's it. That's very simple. And then I said target uh, hemo target. This is target hemolysis. What do you mean by target hemolysis? It's a double zone. You see, it's like a target. You have a target, you know, the hemolysis target. That means it's a double zone. This is also called double zone, double zone hemolysis, double zone hemolysis. That's what. So I say Nagarjun always has what? He has a target. Okay, then target finds it. What about this? What is this? Uh, and one more thing, you know, what his favorite thing is, he likes to drink litmus milk. Litmus milk. Okay, so there is one more question can be asked. Litmus milk fermentation. So if you forget in the exam, most of you must be remembering. I know doctors, you guys remember me. But there are some doctors who at end, you know, in 19th subject, when you're reading, it get volatile and you chance of forgetting is very. That's what I wanted to remember. Mr. Perfect Nagarjun. 
or Mr. Very Nagarjun. So Mr. Perfect means it's close to them perfringes. Nagarjun is because of Negler's reaction. Negler, Naga, Naga, Negler. It becomes easy, right? Then he has a he has this uh, he has this lecithinase gun and he can what that Negler's reaction means that is this opalescence, okay? And he has a gun, lecithinase is a toxin, and he has always a target, good target. That's what you call double zone hemolysis. Okay, in blood agar you can see this. And he has see he has litmus milk. He's a special guy, so he drinks litmus milk. And one more thing is that he has cars. You see, so many cars he has. So that means Mr. Perfect ka kya hai? The Mr. Perfect ka car means what? It's a box car appearance. In gram stain, you will see box car appearance. The word car aage to box car and this is a gram positive bacilli. Na? Gram positive bacilli. Uh, and spore forming also. We'll talk about that in a while. Okay. Spore forming box car. Whenever the word car comes, the rich guy is Naga, Nagarjun. Okay. Mr. Perfect. Clostridium perfringes, box car appearance. So you'll never ever make this question was repeated many times. All these were repeated. Gangrene to Mr. Lecithinase to target hemolysis to everything was repeated. That's what I'm giving this clue. And one more thing, there's some stupidity about Nagarjuna. So what is it, Nagarjuna stupidity? Mr. Negler, Mr. Perfect stupidity? He calls reverse camp. Usually people do normal camp. Okay, normal camp, classic example, you know, group B. Streptococcus, that is your Streptococcus agalactiae. Okay, that's different. We'll come there later. So, but you know who else uh, this crazy, uh, you know who, but but Nagarjun, you know what it is? Reverse camp. Reverse camp, why? In reverse camp, what normal camp in the central, you know, the central zone would be staph or use. But here, you know what? At the central sticking is your Streptococcus agalactiae. Agalactiae. Okay, it'll become a Streptococcus agalactiae. And this tricking is your Clostridium perfringens. Clostridium perfringens. Okay, perfringens. That's what. Okay, that's the reason reverse camp. Okay. And one more thing you have to remember is that it is the Nagarjun sometimes gets very glazy, you know, non-motile. He is non-motile, okay? It's non-motile. Remember, this is the only non-motile clostridium. Only non-motile clostridium. That's one. And also only capsulated. He always wears a cap, okay? And he's only capsulated non-motile. These are the features you have to remember when come for gas gangrene clostridium perfringes, Mr. Perfect Naga. Okay, got it? So, this is a negligence reaction. Your double target. Any of the picture can box car up in. You see this box car? These are like a box. You know, they're like a small, small box car. That's what. And here, in a reverse camp when you see you call it as a butterfly shaped butterfly shaped or wing shaped you know uh, this hemolysis that is basically a camp that's a camp test okay that's it okay now we are going to so this much about the gas gangrene this much you should know and then gas gangrene future you know what happened whenever there's a gas gangrene because of this alpha toxinate alpha men agarjun ka wajah se you are a gas gangrene whenever gas gangrene the gas is filled so when you press that place what happened you'll have a first of all there'll be severe pain whenever there's a gangrene you'll have severe pain plus pain what you have you'll have a crepitus when you press the gas it's obvious right it's like a gas the so gas is formed so when you press it you get a crepitus and one more thing is that uh, one more thing, apart from this, is you 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 see this discharge, which is foul smelling discharge. That is some 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 people say sweet, but it is you know uh, I would say foul smelling, foul smelling. Brawny edema. There's no so many names. You know, brawny edema they call. It. Okay, sometimes people call this malignant edema. So sometimes people call it malignant edema, malignant edema, malignant pustulus, bacillus anthraxis. But here we call this malignant edema. So please remember, these are the important. Malignant, it looks like edema, so it's malignant edema. So malignant edema, gas gangrene, this crepitus, these are the clue words for gas gangrene. And that gas gangrene is one important topic. This much only. You remember Nagarjun's story? Very easy. Everything goes easy. Nagarjun, all these clues, whatever I give, Mr. Perfect, Mr. Alpha Man, target hemolysis. He drinks litmus milk, so crazy. And he's very lazy, non motel encapsulated. And he camp, ulta karta, reverse camp. And he has a lot of cost box cut. Finish. This is about gross and perfect. Okay, so you'll never ever forget you're going to do great in this one. Okay, All right now. So your answer should be definitely Clostridium perfringens. Nothing else. Bacteroides, bacteroides also another another uh, anero, but it doesn't cause gas gangrene. Klebsiella and Bacillus anthraxis is totally different. It it, it don't cause gas gangrene. It causes you know um, the anthraxis subcutaneous. You know you remember ulcer and the what are the diseases? Ulcer, Heidi Potter and ulcer. Right, Heidi Potter cutaneous. Anthrax and ulcer the ulcer is basically pulmonary anthrax. That's an anthrax. Ka, okay, that's a club shell is totally different case. Okay, yes. So this is the first question. Second question again. See, two times they ask this gas gain. That means gas gain is important. Most of the time in FMG and PG, gas gain and questions always there. Now look at this becomes very easy. Now we just saw the picture now, so you guys can answer very easily, right, doctors? So you can answer me now. So uh correct statement. 
uh, regarding gas gangrene. It is caused by, just now we spoke about gas gas gangrene. When if it's Nagarjun, it is Mr. Perfect. So it's Clostridium perfringens. So tetanus is out. So we'll forget about tetanus. You don't even think about tetanus. So it's Clostridium perfringens. But in Clostridium perfringens, it's gram-negative aerobic or it's gram-positive anaerobic. So that is very important. So you just saw the picture before, this picture. It is what gram-positive. So, it is a gram positive and it is definitely anaerobe. Okay, that's what important. So, I'll give you a small clue how to remember. You guys must be knowing. When you talk about the gram positive, what color it looks, it is purple. It, when you talk about gram stock, it looks purple. And just I show in the picture prefer. So, the shortcut for this is McDonald's. You know very all of you must be knowing by the same. McDonald's, all positive people go to McDonald's. Okay, McDonald's. It's junk food, but still, you know, positive people go to McDonald's. That's a shortcut. Okay. So now what are the clues? Yeah, M for mycobacterium. Mycobacterium TB or mycobacterium uh, leprae. Okay, mycobacterium. A for your actinomyces. Actin we have two actinomyces. A, A, one for A actinomyces, one for anthrax. Okay, anthrax. Okay. And C for, we have two things. One is the, uh, this is the Clostridium we're talking now. What we talk now, Clostridium. So Clostridium came here, yeah. D for diphtheria, Coronabacterium diphtheria. You remember diphtheria. N is nothing. N for nocardia. You know N for nocardia. And L for your listeria. Listeria, when your natal meningitis causing gram positive organism. D for diphtheroids. Diphtheroids. That is commensal usually. And S is important. You have two S. You remember? Staph and strepto. Staph and strepto. That's it. Staph and strepto. This is the gram positive. Gram positive are purple in color or violet in color. They're cool, so purple in color. So McDonald's, you remember. Rest all will be your gram negative. Rest all, all other bacteria which comes, they will be the gram negative organism, okay? Which is pink in color. I always say negative people are pink, you know, angry pink. You can see some girls who are, you know, very negative or boys who are negative. They're very pink, pink color, okay? It's not often anyone just to remember, okay? Negative people are pink color, okay? The rest all will be negative. That's fine. Now, uh, now they say aerobe or anaerobe. Okay, when you talk about aerobe, once again, yeah. And now they talk about aerobe or anaerobe. So how to remember? So if you remember anaerobe, see most of them are aerobe. When you talk about anaerobe, when you talk about anaerobe, the shortcut is what? You know, when you get inside a cab, there is no oxygen. No oxygen inside the cab. No oxygen inside the cab. No oxygen inside the cab. So C for your Clostridium, C for your Clostridium, A for your Actinomyces, Actinomyces, okay, and B for your Bacteroides, 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 okay, Bacteroides. These are the anaerobes, common anaerobes. So, so Clostridium is here, okay, Clostridium is here, Clostridium is gram positive, and it's anaerobe ga, anaerobe means cap. Remember, if you, when you sit inside a Ola, Ola or your Uber cap, what happened? This is rapido also. When you sit inside, there is no oxygen. Anaerobe. So, cap. So, close to bacteria. B for bacteroides. Okay. It's not bacillus. Please be careful with that. Okay. That's one thing. Now, spore forming. When you talk about the spore forming, you know, uh, spore forming, you have to remember only, only, you know, it's very easy. BC. Remember BC. Just BC. B for bacillus. This anthrax is bacillus serious, all those stuffs. And the other C for clostridium. That's it. These are the two important Spore forming bacteria. Of course, there's one more C, Coxiella also. Coxiella, Coxiella, if you want to remember that, as you can remember, Coxiella burnetti, not much as, but at least Bacillus and Clostridium, you should remember. Both are gram positive spore forming, but Bacillus is aerobe, uh, Clostridium is anaerobe. Or you remember close, close caro, when you close anything, oxygen, in here. so that's also clue. Clostridium means you close, no oxygen. Or if you want to remember, cab, cab, you remember, easily it comes, okay, that much. So your answer is Clostridium perfringes, a gram positive anaerobic. Spore forming bacillus. Very simple. That's it. Okay. So you remember box car, anything gram positive, you remember that's it. Okay. And then again, if you talk a little bit about the spores, you know, spores, if you saw, if you see the bacillus car, if you if you if you see the bacillus, the spores in the bacillus would be in the center. Okay, it would be in the center, non-bulging. Okay, for bacillus, bacillus spore. But what about a clostridium spore? Your clostridium pore would be usually bulging, bulging. It could be terminal or it could be subterminal or it could be center. It can be anywhere, different type. That is one thing. Okay. B is in the center, not bulging. And C, the, the, the spore is bulging. That's it. This is the few things you should know about the spores. Okay. And individual tetanus, tetanus and tertium or terminal spore and tetanus, you know, how the spore look like? It's a drumstick appearance. The spores and terminal look like drumstick. Tet, tet, karogi. Tertiary ka, tri. 
try ten, uh, you know uh, uh, you are uh, so uh, tennis racket appearance tennis racket r is the racket so tertium okay that i don't want to bring everything here that means it will, it will take a lot of time so i just you know skipping it so this is the clue for basic clues how to remember okay i gave you now easy i gave the format mcdonald's don't forget cam post to mcdonald's and then cab for under that's the most important thing okay yes now the next question look at this all the risk factors of hepatitis c virus infection except okay c virus infection you know we have see this that means you should know all the transmission of all the hepatitis c viruses so now see we have hepatitis a b c d and e the family or first of all the family is an important question they can ask any time usually asked usually asked in many exams so let us see what are the important things you should know in the uh, thing okay hepatitis a uh, a virus belongs to you know always i say a class pick i would always say a class pick these questions were asked picorna virus picorna virus okay the family is picorna a for picorna virus b is the only dna virus all our rna viruses only dna viruses is your in hepatitis is your hbv so this is what this is called hep dna virus hep DNA, hep DNA virus. We call hep DNA virus. C, C, I always remember C for chocolate flavor. You know, C, I write it here. C for chocolate flavor, choco flavor. So, flavor cube, C belongs to Flavi virus. Flavi virus. Very simple. You had a, always they ask question in Picorno or in HCV, one question. And this also, which is the only DNA virus in hepatitis virus, it's your B. B. Okay. And D is they don't have any specific family or not. They usually, it's a friend of B. We'll be this question in that also. E is E belongs to, you know what is easy? E, E, C, E, C, okay. E, C, you know which is easy? Microbiology is easy, okay. Microbiology with me is easy. When you study with me, microbiology doctors, it's easy. So the idea is calcivirus. Calcivirus, okay. Calcivirus, E for calcivirus, okay. E, C, which is easy? Cal you, when you read micro with me, it's easy. That's it, okay. Over your dear, remember. Okay, A class pick. Picker, no, have DNA, flavi. Very simple. This one question can be. What about the root? You know, A and D is always the uh, fecal root. Okay, fecal it usually it's to the food. It usually to the food or water. Food or water. Okay, fecal food or water. Same way, E also. Okay, it is food or food or the water. What about the other viruses? When you talk about B virus, you know, sex is the most common root, followed by sex is the blood transfusion, IV, IV drug, or IV user, you know, IV cannula, whatever, blood transfusion, IT, and the vertical mother to child these are the possible okay in c also almost same but here more it is through the what iv it's most most here more would be blood transfusion and the iv iv drug you know through iv drug, uh, blood transfusion or through the iv user iv users from one iv drug users can come okay and also vertical can come sex is very less in hepatitis c but it can come and d almost same like uh it is almost same like this only again blood transfusion IV drug, vertical, all these things are possible. Okay, so now we are coming to the question. So what is what is what what do we have to remember here? So the answer is so you know the risk of hepatitis C virus infection is IV drug user definitely, uh, except they ask the except which is not. So IV drug user yes, vertical transmission yes possible, razor and blade yes. That's what you are, these days, you know, in barbers, they made that every time you have to change the blades, yeah, new blade and new, uh, when saving the patient, they told us no? that's because of this one of the reason. Also, pico or not. So this is the answer. This is not the way how hepatitis C virus will spread. Okay, that's it. Okay. Yes. Now the next question. Uh, this question also, very interesting question. You can see, what is the marker in the window period of hepatitis B infection? Hepatitis B infection. Okay, so let me go short, very fast. Okay, uh, you know, but hepatitis B markers, you know, you know, them because the markers are very, very important. In, in it, uh, when you talk about hepatitis B, hepatitis virus, the markers are very, very important. So what all markers we have? First of all, let's say this. We have hepatitis uh, B antigen, and then we have what? Hepatitis antibody to the hepatitis b okay antibody then we have hepatitis b e antigen and then we have antibody to antibody to this hbe okay and then we have hbc antigen and then antibody to this is it could be anti hbc igm or it could be anti hbc igg okay right okay now, you have to know when each marker increases in the blood, increases in the blood, what are the, what is your diagnostic, okay? You are doing, whenever whenever you're suspecting a patient with a jointus, when a patient is having jointus and, you know, uh, uh, hepatomegaly or liver cirrhosis or any symptom, abdomen pain, when you think about any liver issue, then you're going to 
check all the markers for all the viruses. So one important thing is for hepatitis B virus. So when you do for hepatitis B virus, so what are the mark? These are the markers you should come because these are the these are the antigen. Sure. When you when you, when you look at hepatitis B virus, if you remember, the outer covering would be the surface antigen. I'm writing a rough figure. It's not a real figure like a, So outer surface is the surface antigen, and inside the surface would be the E antigen. Okay, out and then the center one would be the core antigen. Okay, these are the three things you have that you know very clearly. Now, whenever a surface antigen rises, remember the shortcut to remember is that this first one, second one, third one. Whenever the surface antigen is there, you say yes or no. You say yes or no. Infection is yes or no. Okay, you just say yes or no. So when the yes antigen is there, if it is positive, you say infection is positive. If it is not there, no. That's it. Okay, you say what about anti HP? Yes, antibody. Already, if the antibody is formed, means the patient is in recovery. The patient is recovery or he might be vaccinated. Obvious, no? Vaccinated. Okay. So that's what you have to always check for anti HBC to check vaccinated or not. Also, we're checking this one. Okay. Recovery. Okay. Yes means yes or no. If antibody already formed, means there is no infection. Right. If in the if HBS antigen is there, antigen is the virus, it's antigen. Okay. When our body produces antibody against it, means what? We're already in recovery period. Right. It's easy. You know, yes or no. Shortcut is yes or no. E, E means, you know, E is always evil. E is always evil, evil or enemy. Evil or enemy, matlab kya hai? something is dangerous, all the dangerous things. So whenever E you see, evil you see, that means there is increased what? Pathogenicity, pathogenicity. There is increased replicability, replicability. The hepatitis B virus is replicating very more. Its pathogenicity is very more and increased Severity also, increased severity also. That means it's the worst. The prognosis is very bad. Okay. So these things. But if there is already antibody against this, if there's antibody against the E antigen, anti-HP E means everything is low. All these things, the decreased pathogenicity, decreased replicability, and decreased severity. Okay. Very simple. E for enemy. Enemy means all bad things. If it's antigen is there, everything bad. If antibody is formed, everything is good. Okay. So, okay. This one. This is one thing. I'm just going to mark it here so it becomes clear. Yeah. Now, what about C? C shortcut is chronicity. Chronic means C chronic. That means C tells whether it is acute or chronic. But what? The antibody, not the antigen, because this antigen never comes to blood. Never comes to blood. It is in center. It never comes to blood. Okay, so it is in the center. It never comes with means it's useless. The test is useless. HBC antigen test is not there. So only antibody we have if it is IgM or G. M means, you know, always it is acute. It means patient has acute hepatitis B infection. If G is formed, it is chronic. It is chronic infection. This is the basic thing you should know. Every year you have a question on that, okay? Yes means infection is there or not. It's a basic screening. This is a HBS is a basic screening, okay? If you remember, this also called as Australian antigen. Australian, yes, hey? Uska say yes, okay. That was also Austin question. It was Austin uh, previous exams, okay. Australian antigen, we called this Australian antigen. It's for screening test. Any screening test, or uh, you you do just HBS AG checking only. It's yes, yes means yes means no. But if you want to check the whether antibodies produced or not, you do HBS AG. It says whether recovered of and uh, or uh, vaccinated, okay. And uh, HPE, uh, that's what we do. So whenever you go to joining hospital or anything, the first thing they'll do, uh, check the anti-HPS titer, they will tell you because to know you're vaccinated or not. Okay, that's what this is important. Okay, then HPE means I told enemy, enemy, enemy. So everything is more, sare bada bada hota. If antibody form, everything will be low. C means, C stands for chronicity, but uska antigen useless, only the antibody is important. M is acute infection, chronic, G is chronic infection. That is the better. Now, our question is, which is the marker in the window period? Window period, what is the window? See, look at this picture. Window period means, let's say, see, look at this very nice picture. I love this picture. Uh, in this picture, if you see, uh, you see her, this is the, uh, the graph. The infection started. Someone had sex or IV used and the hepatitis B virus has just entered into his body. There's a, some period called, the first thing is incubation period. During incubation period, you might not see anything. Incubation period is the time of infection till the first symptom to appear. So you don't see anything. Only thing is possible, you do PCR. Every time in, during incubation period, PCR is the best because PCR even one virus is there, it will show positive. That's what we're doing PCR. We don't use that much. So you forget about it. So only when the symptom comes, patient will come for you. So that means after incubation period only, the first antigen to rise is your HBS. This is the first antigen. That's the question. This is the first antigen. 
to rise or first test to rise, whatever. Okay, that's a question, a screen. That's what it is screening just also. Okay, right. Then after that, see, during this time, it goes, goes, goes. Then there is also something called window period. This window period is a time when the antibody is started to form for this HBS, this HBS and Seneca antibody form. The time between the uh, uh, the, anti the antigen entry to the, anti uh, the antibody to appear, that window period time is the, you see the HBS antigen is going, going, going till here. And then it takes some time for anti-HBS antibody to form. So that time gap during that window period, that window period, during that window period, what happened? It, during this window period, HBS HG also can be there. Okay, but but what happened? You have other markers. Which one? Your anti-HBC IgM. So this is during your window period. This one. During this period, you might, uh, apart from HBS AG, you might get anti-HBG IgM also. That's what. But anti-HBC IgM is much better answer. So for window period, anti-HBC IgM is important. It's right. Okay, that's the question. So let's go back. So if you see here, so if the question comes like this and they ask you in the window period, which is the best, you will say anti-HBC IgM. During that window period, between that antigen disappearance and antibody appearance, HBS car, the only characteristic one would be HBS IgM. HBS AG also, right? But we don't have HBS AG. But ideally, the best one is your this thing. So for window period, may this is the best IgM, this acute, what we said, this not only tells about the acute infection, also for during the window period, for the window period also, this is very, very important. Your IgM is, HBC IgM is important for your acute and plus window period. During window period, it's the best marker. Or this is the first antibody to rise. You can see this is the first antibody to rise also. Okay, first uh, first antigen to rise is your, first antigen to rise is your, uh, is your uh, HBS AG. The first antibody to rise is your HBC IgM. That's it. This is the question. Okay. Right. So now you got, you finish this question. Now next question. Again, hepatitis is very important. I saw a lot of questions were asked these days. So now see presence of HBE antigen in the HBB infection suggestive of. Now clue. You don't have to think too much. E is there. So E means what? E means it is the E means E ka antigen hai to, it's enemy. Enemy means everything is very high. What are high? Replication is high. Pathogenicity is high. Severity is also high. Prognosis is very bad. So what is the answer? Active replication of HBV. Exactly. You got it. Active, uh, the replication is happening very much. Okay. So that is the answer. Acute, you don't say. Acute means which should rise? IgM of HBC. HB, HB, C, AG, IgM. Chronic means you should have Ig, G should be raised. Okay. Carrier, nothing for carrier. You don't have to go very much. It is HBSAG sometimes for carrier and all, so it's fine. Okay, so acute replication is the answer. Okay, that's fine. This you got it. Okay, very good. Now, next one. Now, simultaneous. See this question. When there's a simultaneous infection of hepatitis B and D virus, for, followed by full recovery associated with appearance of. So, you know the clue. You always, uh, you must be, you must, I'm sorry. Yeah, you always know that Hepatitis D virus, this is this can't survive alone. It's also called what Delta virus or Delta agent. Yeah, Delta D L T Delta virus. Yeah. This is always it has to go with the hepatitis B virus only. It can't survive alone. So these two only they cause infection. Either they to same time they can cause something that is called co-infection. Co-infection, we call it as co-infection, or super infection. Super infection. Okay. Super super infection means. First, the patient is already having hepatitis B virus infection. On top of that, what happened? Hepatitis D virus will come. Okay, that is called super infection. Now, the trick. So, uh, co-infection, everybody knows. Now, how to know? So, then how, what is the difference? The difference is that whenever there is a co-infection, it usually, it ends in acute hepatic infection. You usually have an acute liver infection only. You will have acute liver infection. But when there is a super infection, it becomes what? It becomes chronic and fulminant. It will be dangerous. You know, it becomes fulminant. Fulminant, but not in the acute. Acute means fine. Usually patient recover after acute infection. If there's a co-infection, patient will go acute and usually recover. So whenever in co-infection, acute means which antibody you're, saying, you're thinking to increase? IgM to increase, right? So if it is a chronic, then it would be IgG. IgG. Now come to the question. Here they say simultaneous. They didn't give co-infection. This is simultaneous. Simultaneous because dusra naam hai co-infection. Same time, dona infection. Whenever two friends are going together, everything will be fine. You understand? 
when two friends are walking together any type of danger comes you can compensate that's what it is just acute infection right but if uh, two or one is going front and one is coming back or one joining him later in between anything can happen so it's dangerous that's what in super infection you get chronic and fulminant it's the most common uh, hepatitis d virus is most common cause of fulminant infection when there is super infection that is the question apart from hepatitis e virus for pregnancy fulminant but in super infection this d is very uh, fulminant okay so now your answer so what happened? The patient now went to full recovery. So that means he just had an acute infection, acute infection, and he's already in recovery. Acute infection, and then he's now under recovery infection, and now he's undergoing recovery. So recovery means what should be there? The immunoglobulin should have rise. Acute means the HDV itself should be there. Na? Antigen should be there. Now his recovery means so IgM should be rise. So high titer of IgD and GM. Very, very simple. So only one concept. Co-infection means acute. So, IgM. Super infection means it's chronic. So, IgG. Very simple. Okay. So, don't make mistakes. This is the important question again. Okay. Yes. Now, next. H. pylori. Now, H. pylori. Uh, H. pylori, it, it, this is also interesting to me. Associated with which malignancy? You know that. H. pylori means itself. It is the stomach. Okay. It is the stomach. H. pylori means itself. The uh, the location of the H. pylori is always your stomach, right? Stomach many, right? Right? Pylori. So, uh, you know that what happened. Uh, okay. See, mo you most of them know the answer. But again, for some students, again, who has problem with the micro, for them, I wanted to give some clues. Okay. Now, so uh, H. pylori, uh, pylori, you know, lori. Okay. What happened? During a lori function, you eat a lot of things. You eat a lot of food, nuts, that, this, so many things you eat, right? And also what you drink? Malt. It's for fun. At a lori night, lori night, may you you drink malt, okay? Night. And and lori is uh, usually celebrated at night time. You know, night time, what is there? There's a lot of star, right? A lot of stars in the sky. And of course, uh, okay, now a lot of food. Why a lot of food? Because the food will go to the stomach. So main reason is, you know, in stomach, may H. pylori lives in the stomach and it causes ulcer, ulcer and different type of cancer. Malt, because when you drink malt, what happened? H. pylori makes into maltoma. Maltoma. Remember, that's what I want to say. So remember, lori, lori function, you drink malt, that's what you get, maltoma. Okay, this is a clue, okay, clue, okay. So in lori function, you eat a lot of nuts and malt, you drink malt is like a beer, no? so you drink it, and then you get what, maltoma. So lori function may malt, aega, mal lori function may malt, pee hoge, you'll get maltoma. But not only that, H. pylori causes, most important cause of what, gastric carcinoma. It usually causes the gastric or stomach cancer, right? Gastric carcinoma. With gastric carcinoma, one more important thing, this maltoma. It can cause this maltoma also. Okay, that's this is the main important thing that I want to stress, maltoma. And uh, maltoma and the gastric ulcer, you know, gastritis and gastric ulcer, commonly, usko stomach mein kya kya aega, everything is because of H. pylori. Now, the answer is maltoma. So, what about this? Burkitt's and Hodgkin's lymphoma. Burkitt's and Hodgkin's lymphoma, it is caused by your favorite Epstein-Barr virus, our favorite Epstein-Barr virus. Okay, when some question we will discuss, we have a lot of clue for EBV also, I mean, Epstein-Barr virus. Adult T-cell is caused by Uska virus here, adult T-cell leukemia virus itself. Okay, same. Now, I said nights because H. pylori, total we will discuss. It's a nice and star. Why is star? Because Uska, uska stain hai for H. pylori, we use Vartin starry, Vartin starry, Vartin starry stain. Okay, okay, that's that's one more thing. Okay, uh, it's a silver, it's a Vartin, it's a silver stain, everything looks black, black color. Okay, curved, uh, it's a curved baseline, you know. So that thing, that's what you remember. Okay, Vartin starry stain because starry, I remember because of star. You remember star, Vartin starry, important question. And kya hoga lori mi tana kaigo to, uska kya smell laiga? Urea smell laiga. Mouth se kon se smell laiga? Urea smell. Okay. Now we have other question there also. So these are important things. Malt, maltoma, night starry because Vartin starry is a special stain we use and a lot of food. Okay. That's it. But you know malt, don't forget. H. pylori means stomach. Lori function means stomach mein. Kya aiga? Maltoma aiga. That's it. Okay. H. pylori. Helicobacter pylori. Full name is Helicobacter pylori. Now let's go to a topic. Same. Again, they asked one question. Same from here. They asked investigation of choice during the follow-up of patient who had anti-H. pylori drugs. Anti-H. pylori drugs, okay. So, anti-H. pylori drugs, we are not going to discuss because we don't have much time and that is more a uh, medicine or pharma question. Basically, what happened? You have that, if you remember, there is for anti-H. pylori drugs, we have quadruple therapy and 
triple therapy, quadruple therapy and triple therapy for H. pylori treatment, right? H. pylori treatment. Quadruple, ha. Huh. So, uh, here in quadruple therapy, it's basically your, you're using a uh, 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 bismuth. It's with a bismuth, okay? It's with a bismuth. This is no bismuth, without bismuth, okay? With bismuth, you are giving, what else you're giving? Uh, metronidazole. And then you're giving tetracycline, tetracycline. And then one more thing is what? Uh, other clarithromycin, clarithromycin. Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, so for triple therapy, may, without this thing, you're going to use the, uh, with PPI, okay? With PPI. This all things goes with PPI. Proton pump inhibitor, proton pump inhibitor. That's what they call uh, OB, uh, you know, OBTM. This is uh, OCM, different type of combinations, quadruple this thing, okay, with these drugs. In triple therapy, it would be, bismuth will not be there. Instead of that, what PPI along with PPI is basically omeprazole we give. It's so omeprazole. With PPI, we are going to give what? Metro or it could be amox, amoxicillin plus clarithro. Three drugs only, clarithro. Okay, like this, this combination, this is the combination of that thing. Okay, so now this is more you will read there. There are a lot of shortcuts to more also. Uh, I, I think pharma teachers will tell you. I don't want to mix everything. So what happened now? Oh, these treatments you're taking to eradicate the H. pylori. Now the patient is taking the treatment coming to you for a follow-up. So which is the test you are going to advise for him? Which is the test? First, let me take the answer and then we'll go. Urease breath test, rapid urease, stool antigen, serology for the H. pylori, which is the best one here. The best answer is your urease breath test. Okay, urea breath test, that is urease enzyme detecting. Okay, that's what I told. Lori me sab kate, urea smell aata hai. Okay, because of H. pylori. So now urease breath is the best test. Stool antigen also can be used, but the best is this only. If urea breath is not there, then you can go for stool antigen for H. pylori. So we can do. Okay, so now a little bit about the diagnosis of the H. pylori. Okay, little bit. Let's see now. So what are the things you have to remember? Now, uh, we have two tests, non-invasive, we have non-invasive, non-invasive test for H. pylori and invasive test we have, invasive, invasive test. Okay, two H. pylori tests are very important, medicine point of view also and as microbiological point of view also. Okay, so if you remember here, now I'll tell you, non-invasive test may, this is the urease breath, which is the very most commonly used screening test, prognosis test, easy test, screening test, everything is this one, urease breath test. This is the most commonly used one. Okay, non-invasive means just breath, breath analyzer. We have breath analyzer. Tell the patient to breathe. We give this capsule, urea capsule. He'll take and urea is broke down into what? By urea sends in the stomach, break down into ammonia and uh, other compound. So CO2 compound. When that comes out, we are capturing the breath and seeing how much urea is. That is only. Otherwise, we do stool antigen test, ELISA. It's a basically stool antigen is basically ELISA test and an ELISA test. And of course, you do a uh, serological test also you can do. That is like other ELISAs and everything you can do. Okay, that's it. In invasive test means what you do? You do a biopsy. You take a biopsy. You're invasive. No? So you take a endoscopic biopsy. Endoscopic biopsy. And that biopsy, you're going to do what? You're going to do a stain. That is, I told you, grams and also Vartin. Just now we told Vartin Stary. Night may stary or the Vartin Stary. Vartin Stary stain. Or you do a culture. If you remember, culture is same. Campylobacter and Donoka. What is the culture? Skiros media. Campylobacter and H. pylori is the same. It is Skiros media. Camping may ski karogi. In a lorry function, maybe up skiing karogi. Ski. You do ski during lorry function also. Okay. Staining culture. And other one is what you are? Rapid ureus. Rapid ureus is basically tissue say you make, you detect the, you take the tissue and then you put it into the solution and all, check for ureus there. So that is invasive. So these are the few tests we have. All are important questions you must know. Okay, that's it. Okay. Now, finished. This is about your H. pylori. We have briefed the H. pylori. So you know that. Okay. H. pylori is very easy. Now, next one. Okay. Uh, now, the next question here is, look here, which is the following is not the which of the following is not a major criteria of modified Duke's criteria? Modified Duke, that is basically Duke's criteria. We're talking about the Duke's here. So if you remember the Duke's, if you remember the Duke's criteria, okay, let me just take it. Huh. So if you remember the Duke's criteria, yeah, uh, let's talk about the, you know, in which disease the Duke's criteria comes for? Duke's criteria, modified Duke's criteria only, okay, Duke's criteria, it comes in which one? You must be knowing, it must be in your fingertips, but Duke's is very important, but which it is, is infective endocarditis, infective endocarditis, infective endocarditis, yeah, infective endocarditis, infective endocarditis can be caused by common staphylococcus aureus, 
uh, we'll talk about native valve versus staphyreus. If it's a prosthetic valve, it is cones, or if it is subacute, it is subacute or damaged heart valve, then it is your viridens group, streptococcus viridens group. Okay, so that's a common one. We have any bacteria can cause, of course. So we'll talk about Duke's criteria. We have two criteria. We have a major criteria, and then we have the minor criteria. We have major and then the minor criteria. So what are the major and the minor criteria? The shortcut for this is very easy. The shortcut is what? B timer. Shortcut is simply B the timer. B the timer. B the timer. You know what? Duke is always... Uh, okay, let me come there. First finish and then we'll come there. So major criteria only two. Two means one B for blood culture. The blood culture, the blood culture should be positive. The blood culture should be positive. At least how much? Two times. Two, uh, two times in 12 hour gap, two culture should be positive with giving the same organism. Okay, two culture, except coxella, that one culture is enough that you don't remember so much. Blood culture should be positive, number one. Okay, and E for echo. In echo, what you'd find is any changes in the wall. In the wall, there should be a new abscess, a new abscess, or there should be a new, or there should be a new mass. Or if it's a prosthetic wall, if it's a prosthetic wall, what do you expect in a prosthetic wall? There should be a descent, a tear. You know, descent means something like a tear. It should be there. So these should be in your echo. In echo, your valve should have a valve or endometrium. Oh, I'm sorry, in endocardium. Endocardium. Endometrium is uterus, sorry. Endocardium. You have all these changes should be there. Okay. Either abscess or mass or these things. That is a major criteria. In minor criteria, a lot of minor T for temperature. The temperature should be, you should have a fever. The patient should have a fever. More than 38 degrees uh, Celsius. Yeah, fever. I for there should be immunological changes. Immuno when you talk about immunological changes, the most important lesions you're going to talk here is what? Rot spot, rot spot, and the other one is your Osler's node, Osler's node, rot spot, Osler's node, okay, rot spot, Osler's node, okay, Osler's node, and also it could be your post uh, uh, sorry, glomerular, I'm not positive, it's just a glomerular nephritis or rheumatoid arthritis, anything related with the immune complex, that's what immunological changes. M for microbial evidences, but other than non-culture, not the culture one, other one like serology. Any serological test suggestive of microbiology. Okay, micro, microbe. Okay. And E for uh, E is the embolism. Embolism or vascular event. Embolism event or any vascular event you call vascular changes. Vascular changes may I got Janway lesion. If you remember Janway. Janway lesion should be there in the end. Otherwise, any embolism leads to hemorrhage. You know, any hemorrhage. Any hemorrhage in the eye or in the brain, any hemorrhage. Okay, at least remember Janway, J E E Janway, E for embolism, Janway embolism. Okay, and R for other risk factors. Risk factors means IV drug users, IV drug users, or prosthetic wall, prosthetic wall, these things. Okay, very easy. Okay, B, B timer, B timer. Okay, B timer is very, very important. Okay, so now let's go to the question. So, see the question in this question which is not the major criteria. New partial prosthetic valve descent? Yes, we just said. We said in echo, cardio, in echo, if there is any new valve descent, that is a major criteria. So this is there. Positive blood culture, definitely B for B. So positive blood culture, right. Okay. And then rot spot. No. Direct question. Rot spot is coming under minor criteria, which comes under the immunological event timer, I immunologic event. Rot spot also will come. There. So that is not, you can do it. New valve, definitely. I forgot to tell you in echo, not only mass and this thing, even if you see in a valve regurgitation also, regurgitation also that is a echo finding. <coughs> Excuse me. So any valve change in the echo finding. Okay, so this is the answer. Now same again, they ask the same, I don't know why they love asking the same questions, I think. See this question again. Here they asked, which one of the following is the vascular manifestation? When they say my vascular manifestation, it means the embolism event. It, they're talking about the embolism, embolism, right? Embolism may just we saw right now, just before we saw Osler's node, rot spot, glomerular nephritis. These three are what even these three are immune complex event. They are immune complex. They are the immunological event or immune complex events. Okay, minor criteria. May. But embolism or vascular event may E for I told E Ata. So Jan way, Jan way, okay. Jan, Jani way, Jan ways, okay. Jan ways embolism. So Jan way is coming in the vascular embolism, but not only Jan way lesion, there should be any hemorrhage, conjunctival hemorrhage, I any conjunctival eye hemorrhage, or brine hemorrhage, or any brine hemorrhage. So these things will be the 
or vascular event. So these are the manifestations. Okay. So that is one thing you should remember. Now look at this picture. Uh, look at this picture. You know, uh, uh, this question can be like this also. You know what? Uh, I would remember uh, you told Dukes. We talk about Dukes. You know, Dukes has a, he's a he's a B timer. He's a B timer for whom? Roja. Roja. Remember as Roja. Why Roja? R for Roach spot, O, Oslos, and Janvay. These all are in infective endocardiogram. Okay. It's not criteria based. I'm just giving. Oh, one more thing I forgot. I'm just coming back here. Uh, listen. Here, in major and minor criteria, to say it is a definite diagnosis, I forgot to tell that. When you want to say definite diagnosis, definite diagnosis, you should have how much? How much major and how much minor? You should have two major plus one minor or you should have one major one major plus three minor or you should have five minor not like a jones criteria in jones criteria you should have a major there you have two major or one major other minor just minor say you can't say it a definite diagnosis but in infective endocarditis even just with five minor also you can say rest anything come that those are probable diagnosis okay so this is the definite diagnosis of infective endocarditis is by in duke's criteria is this two major one or one major three and five minor okay please remember that also that can be also question so now uh, now listen here so, Roja are for, this is the Roach spot. In retina, you have a bleeding. That's called Roach spot. Due to immune complex bleeding. Okay, Roach spot. And this is the Osler's node. These, these are the spots, Roach spot. Okay. These nodes, may you what you think, that is called Osler's node. Osler's node. Very interesting, no? These are Osler. This is also due to immune complex. Okay. But J, due to vascular, but this is the one. You see on the palms, on the palms and hands, Janeway lesion. Janeway Lesion. This is because of the embolism. We just spoke, right? Embolism. Because of the embolism. Vascular event. Okay. So, this picture comes. It's easy. Road spot, osseous, and this thing. So, it's a geolog infective endocarditis. Okay. So, you told about this much, but what about the common infections caused? Yes. Very simple. When you talk about infective endocarditis, let's say like this. It's the most overall infection. Overall infective endocarditis. Overall or acute Infective endocarditis is most common cause. What is the most common cause? Important. Then you should know prosthetic wall. And you should know in prosthetic wall, which is the most common infection. And what is the most common cause of damaged or subacute? Damage means always subacute. Damage means always have subacute. Infective endocarditis may which one? And IV drugs. IV drug uses may which is the most common one. And uh, in IV may, if it is the left side, IV, and if it is left side, left left side, I'm going to write it left side, IV, which is the most common one. Okay, now let's discuss a little bit. So you have always question on this. That's what I'm stressing here. And it's microbiologically very important. Overall, any acute, uh, not only acute, even native, native valve, native valve, infective endocarditis comes, you know the answer that is your Staphylococcus aureus. Staph aureus is the king of infection. So any infective endocarditis, the most common cause if it comes is the staph aureus. Okay. Overall, acute native. Prosthetic. Any prosthetic comes, you should remember cones, cones, cones. That is your staphylococcus epidermidis. Staphylococcus epidermidis. Okay. Most common one. And usually when it is what? Less than, if it is less than, less than one year. If less than one year, less than one year of prosthetic wall, it is cones. If it is more than that, then it would be what? Your viridens. So, so any damage or subacute, it is viridens. Streptococcus, that is streptococcus viridens group. Streptococcus viridens, right? So how to remember this? Our viru hai, viru hai, viru cricket player, viru shevog, who you won't remember. Viru ka heart damaged hai, uske paas hai damaged heart. Uska damaged heart hai, uska wajah se uska subacute hai, subacute infection. Okay, that's remember, that you have to remember, okay. Right, and then IV drug, IV means, you know, IV is who gives the IV, IV cannula cone, who puts the IV cannulas in hospital, our staffs, so staphylococcus, staphylococcus, okay, staphylococcus aureus again, aureus, huh. and also, Right side, if they ask right side IV drug also, staffs are always right. Staffs are always right, right, right. Okay, remember. Okay. 
But left side, if they ask left side IV trachea, it is your enterococcus. That is different one. Enterococcus. Okay. You enter to the left because right is for staffs. Right always stops. Nursing stops. Nursing stops are right, right, right. Staphylococcus aureus is right. Okay. Staff, nursing stops are always right. So better doctors, you go left side. Okay. That's the clue. The staff, staffs, nursing staff, staphylococcus aureus, they are the right people. So right, right is them. Left, you go left. Okay. Don't forget. And uh, otherwise, overall, the king is also staff. Acute native, you know, staff, um, especially Malayali nurses, they love their native Kerala. Okay, native. So, it's again, staff. So, staff, staff. So, staff will help you a lot of staff, especially Malayali nursing staff will help you in many places. Remember, like that, it's easy. Okay. And prosthetic wall means coins or epidermis. You remember damage, full viru ka damage. Viru means viridens. Viru, viridens. Viridens ka kya hai? Uska damage ra hai. So, subacute infidement of colitis. Okay, that's it. Very, very simple. Now, uh, now, we are going to the next question. Another my, one of the interesting questions is Duffy antigen. Duffy antigen has a receptor for which plasmodium? You know very well this question. Why? What is the answer? Duffy. Duffy, I get to Duffy's whose girlfriend? I always say this. Duffy is the girlfriend of... Duffy is a girlfriend of who? Duffy is... Duff, you know, it's like this. Duffy is... Boyfriend is... Or you remember. Boyfriend is what? Vivek. But Vivek not only as Duffy, Vivek, Vivek has another girl also. What is another girl's name? Another girl's name? Shafna. S H A F N Shafna because of the Shafna's dot. S H uh, S H A F F N Shafna's dot. I think some spelling mistake, but it's okay. Shafna's dot. You remember, right? Shafna's dot is also for Vivek is why Plasmodium vivax. Okay, Vivek's girlfriend, though girlfriend, eh? Ek, the real girlfriend is Shafna, Shafna's dot. Okay, but another one assistant girlfriend is, a second girlfriend is Duffy. Why Duffy? Because, you got it right? No, no, uh, you see, uh, Plasmodium, you know, all Vivek type of guys are always, you know, smart and handsome. So, they usually they have two, two girlfriends. One is Shafna, Shafna's dot, you see inside the RBC. Okay, the pigment, the pigments you see Shafna. And Duffy, Duffy is because, I'll tell you what, Duffy is basically, when you see in RBCs, RBC surface, where most of the RBCs, we have an antigen called Duffy. Some people, they don't have. Some, most of them, they have. So whenever there's a Duffy antigen or it's type of receptor, what happened? It makes the entry of plasmodium vivax easy. That is the duty of a girlfriend. Na? Girlfriend will help the boy to enter inside. Na? So the boy, Vivek, plasmodium vivax easily enter because of a Duffy. And unfortunately, he also has, maybe fortunately, has another girlfriend, Shapna also, Shapna. That's it. You got it? So answer is Vivex. Vivek. I'm sorry. Vivex. Okay. Viv plasmodium Vivex. Okay. Got it? Right. That's it. So it's very simple. Duffy antigen is plasmodium Vivex. Single question. So easily. You never made mistake there. Now, what about this question? Pla uh, now, next question. You see this next question. Prima Queen destroys the hypnozoids of Vivex in which organ? So you know that there are two people who undergo hypnosis. Okay. What are the, who are the two people? Mr. Vivek. Dusra hai James. Whenever I say James, it is ovale. Why? When, when, when you talk with James Todd, it's in ovale. Vivax because plasmodium vivax. By uska sharpness data. I'm not going to bring that here. E, these two people are always sleepy. So what? They undergo hypnosis. They undergo hypnosis. Kaha par hypnosis data? Sleepy hypnosis kaha jata hai? In the hepatocyte. Or in hepatic, hepatic means liver. Hepatic means liver. H H a gaya na? Hepatic liver. Okay, hypnosis. So to wake them up, what to do? Uska kya kon chahiye to wake them up? You know who comes to wake them up? You remember the drug name? Prema. Prema with her coffee toffee. Okay, toffee. I make it as toffee. Ha na? Toffee coffee. With the toffee coffee, they wake them up. What is prema? So now it will come everywhere. So this is plasmodium vivax because plasmodium vivax, plasmodium ovale, sleepy because hypnozoids, hypnozoids. I'll tell you the cycle in a while. Hypnozoids usually what happen many times. Some in, especially in these two cases, not many times. Sometimes hypnozoids go uh, this uh, the sporozoid which is entering into our body from the mosquito. It goes and remains in the liver. Quietly, it undergoes a transformant hypnosis and sleeps there for years. And it remains there. What happens whenever the condition occurs, it forms this, what it causes? It causes relapse. After a few years, you need to remain silent. Suddenly, it will wake up and it causes relapse. 
okay then we'll get malaria so that is the reason hypnosis whatever hypnozoids they remain there silently they get activated they converted into cyjon all the cycle and again they could relax in every three years years it could be two you know two to three years it takes for the relapse to occur then they remain in liver otherwise they remain in liver hypnosis happily so prema and topic here because the drug of choice to kill them is prima queen prema with a toffee Tafina queen, okay. T A E Tafina queen. This is another drug, new drug. Tafina queen. Remember, this was a question. Prema queen and the Prema with a toffee comes and she tells this guy, hey, please wake up. They wake up. Okay. Okay. Got it. That's it. So now, hypnozoid H the clue here. Hepatic. H means hepatic. So hepatic means liver. So answer is simple. That's it. Prema queen, Prema wake. Prema, along with the coffee, she wakes up these two guys, Vivek and James, okay, who are sleeping in the liver. Very simple. Okay. So if you want shortly, briefly, uh, you must be knowing the cycle, but see, you know that mosquito is the definite host in malaria. If you remember, mosquito is the definite host in one of the exception comes, a definite host of malaria, right? Malaria. So when it bites, what is the thing which goes in the sporozoite? Sporozoite is the infective stage for us. These are all the questions, infective stage, which is the infective stage for human? Sporozoite. Sporo means spear. As a karo, kisine hamko spear se mar diya. Mosquito, Mosquito, plasmodium mosquito, it hamko, uh, not plasmodium, anopheles mosquito, the female anopheles mosquito, kisses a mare sporocytes hamko maradia. Okay, so the sporocyte of the plasmodium goes inside. See, some of them they become hypnocytes. This is the one they're talking, especially what in the vivax in the plasmodium, vivax in the plasmodium ovale. And rest other cases, it goes regular cycle. Sejon banta hai, then liver hepatic sejon, and hepatitis releases the merozoid. Then it goes what? Your RBC, blood may RBC cycle, RBC, all the late, uh, early troposoid, late troposoid, and all, all those things. And then gametocyte, gametocyte is infected stage to the mosquito for us the infective man the infective stage is the sporozoid for mosquito it is the gametocyte okay this is the cycle so the hypnozoids some of the hypnozoids it's in uh, vivax and ovale is responsible for this hypnosis okay and it goes activation later on okay it's very very simple easy okay so that's all i'm going to the next one now now next question Look at this question. Again, interesting. All are correct statement regarding urinary tract infection. UT urinary tract infection, except, okay? Except, urinary tract infection, except, we have to say, which is wrong statement here. So now wrong statement is, urine is the excellent culture media for UTI. Is Urine is the excellent culture media for UTI. Urine is the excellent culture media for UTI. Definitely, yes, that is right. Yes. Atrophic urethritis in a postmenopausal woman is a risk factor. Definitely, yes. Why? Because um, uh, atrophic urethritis, postmenopause, estrogen hormones goes down. So, automatically, these atrophic changes happen. So, that causes, uh, you know, good environment for the microbe to grow. Okay. And antibiotics are recommended to in all cases of asymptomatic bacteria. Not at all. Not at all. Okay. This is impossible because we have to avoid antibiotics to this type of patient to avoid the resistance. So when the patient is asymptomatic, simply bacteria means we're not going to do anything. We are just not, especially this is common in uh, pregnancy. In pregnancy, it happens. So we are trying to avoid it maximum. Okay. Based on number of calling clinical symptoms only we are doing. So antibiotics usually for normal patient uh, pregnancy may there's some conditions. Otherwise not. Okay. Otherwise you don't give antibiotics unnecessarily for an asymptomatic bacteria patient. Okay. And certain strains of E. coli have propensity to invade. Yes, we have the urogenic E. coli. They have propensity to invade the urinary tract. That's also right. So which is the wrong statement? This one. This one is your wrong. So antibiotics recommend all cases are wrong statement. Okay. That's it. This UTA is very simple. And you know, the more uh, this one. See if you once again, sorry. Huh. Yeah. So if you remember, this is the uh, unit uh, uh, picture. See, this is the upper UTI. We have the upper UTI. I'm sorry. Let's go to this color. Hmm. Huh. So we have upper UTI. Upper UTI means above. Uh, this is either kidney or in the ureter. This one. Kidney or in the ureter. Upper UTI. So it, uh, kidney means pyelonephritis, ureter, urethritis. And lower UTI, it's bladder and the urethra. This lower cystitis or urethritis. That's it. Okay. So these are the things important. So and, uh, one of the important things is that uh, uh, in uh, UTI, most common cause of UTI, anything, hospital, community, uh, whatever acquired over any case, oh, the most common cause is always E. coli. Don't forget. Yeah. E. coli is the most common cause. That is one thing you have to remember. Another thing important is that which is the best urine sample? Midstream urine. Uh, uh, see, usually uh, the best the best urine sample is usually suprapubic. Suprapubic aspirate. Suprapubic aspirate. It's the best one because it is without any contamination, get a pure growth. But 
commonly used is midstream urine. Commonly we use is midstream urine, which is commonly midstream urine. Usually recommended is midstream urine because initial some of the uh, commensal batteries will go away. Then middle will be with the proper result. So commonly used is midstream, but the best is suprapubic aspirate. Okay. And now after growing in a colony, I, I, the urine sam I have sampled and I have grown. The colony is growing in the plate. Okay. It's grown. When I count the colony, if it is more than or equal to 10 to the power 5, that is called significant bacteriuria. See, this is to this is called cause concept, cross concept. Okay, significant, significant. If my colony is more than ten to the power five, colony forming unit per ml urine is fine. Just remember ten to the power five, significant bacteriuria, significant bacteriuria. Okay, and if it is ten to the power four to ten to the power five, uh, if it is four ten to the power five, I have to you have to correlate. You have to correlate with the clinical, and then you have to give the treatment. Okay, correlate. If it is less than 10 to the power 4, that is called non uh, that is called non-significant bacteria. That is not a significant, non-significant bacteria. That is means that is commensals. That is not the pathogen. It's just the commensals are growing. So more than 10 to the power 5 is still correct for significant bacteria. Less than that, it's you have to correlate clinically. Less than 10, not significant bacteria. This is one of the things when you're interpreting the culture. During the culture, you have to interpret like this, urine culture. Okay. That's it. Yeah. For UTI. Now see the next question. Next question again. My inter it's my one of favorite questions. Uh, which of the following were true regarding brucellosis? Uh, you know, doctors, this is this. See, there are a lot of things you need. Just have to make some clues. Okay. You might be confident you're knowing all the things, but you know what happens sometimes. You no, know, um, you will uh, forget the things. You know, 19 subjects or so many things to do. So you always keep some shortcuts. Make yourself few things you know, that you will understand easily. Okay. So that's the thing. Okay. So now let's go to the next this question. A brucellosis for brucellosis, you see, which is true. Which of the following is true regarding brucellosis? Fever develops in the undulating pattern for weeks. Is it true or right? Which of the following is true? Okay, it's right. We have a undulant fever. We will talk about brucellosis in a while. Okay, undulant fever. Yes, we have undulant fever. Right. Musculoskeletal problems is it? Definitely there is. Okay. And brucellosis are facultative intracellular parasite. Also right. It is usually intracellular parasite. All the above. All are right. Okay. Now let's come to this one. You know what? I always say Bruce Lee. You remember Bruce Lee. You remember Bruce Lee. Bruce Lee. Bruce Lee militancies. You remember Bruce Lee. Bruce Lee the actor. Right. Bruce Lee. Bruce Lee came past. Bruce Lee is an actor. So he travels everywhere. What are his favorite places? He goes to Malta. He goes to Mediterranean, Mediterranean, and then he goes to Uganda, Uganda, and in uh, and also Tbilisi. Okay, Tib Tib Tbilisi is his place. Also in India, his favorite place, Kasinada, Kasinada. Okay, remember that much. Bruce Lee, that fighter, no Chinese actor, he's popular, so he loves traveling everywhere. Okay, these are the places he's traveling. Okay, why, sir? Why did he say? So these are the types of fever, uh, not all, sorry. These are the fever, Malta fever, Mediterranean fever, Uganda is becoming undulant fever, undulant fever, easy, right? So anything word, Malta, Mediterranean, undulant fever comes, it is your Brussels. Okay, all our questions frequently asked, Uganda make us undulant. Tbilisi, it's the phage, it's a phage typing for your Brussels. Also question asked in uh, previous PG exams. Castinada, why did I say Castinada? Because Castinada media, Castinada media. That is this biphasic media, especially for your Brucella. Okay, we are using. And, and not only that. Now, uh, now this one. Another thing most important frequently asked is the, uh, what they ask is the, uh, the, the test. Bruce Lee ke pas kya hai? Satellite hai, satellite. So, sat test. Standard agglutination test is the best test for Brucella. Apart from the culture, Casinada, Castinada media. SAT is standard agglutination test. Standard agglutination test. Standard agglutination test is characteristic frequently as many times. It is the test for your uh, Brucella. Very characteristic test. Apart from that, you know, we have uh, milk ring, uh, rose Bengal test and all. Less, less asked. Okay. So these are the things. Now, let's go to the uh, now, yeah, once again. So, these are a few shortcuts you're going to remember. Satellite and he travels all these places. That's it. Okay. This you remember. Okay. Now, this is the undulant fever. So, when you talk about Brucella, clinical future, when you talk about Brucella, 
there's a brussel brucellosis brucellosis the triad we have a classic triad what is the triad it is simply fever which is your undulant fever undulant the brucellosis is somewhat similar to typhoid fever also except the fever pattern there it's step ladder here it's undulant otherwise all are almost same and then they have what arthritis that's what we told mus musculoskeletal problem and other one is your hepatosplenomegaly hepatosplenomegaly this is the characteristic triad Okay, this is the which is the undulant fever like this. See, it is for days. It's increasing. The temperature slowly increases for days, and then again return to normal like this. That's the characteristic feature. Okay, brucellosis. This is a question which is called Castinada media. Castinada media, also called what biphasic media. Why it is called biphasic? I always say Bruce Lee is bi. B for B also is there, or if you forget also, there are so many Bs. So B of Bartonella, we have border club is So don't confuse. Bi by B, biphasic, Bruce Lee, Bruce Lee is bi, is bisexual. Remember that is a bisexual. Okay. So this is a solid media, and then this is a liquid media. Solid and this is liquid. So that's what we call biphasic media. This is a liquid media. So okay, Castanella. That's it. This is much about the Brucella. It's more than enough. Okay. Yeah. Treatment streptomycin. That is okay, not my chest. Now, next question now here. Which virus is transmitted by the blood transfusion? Blood transfusion. You know, during blood transfusion, when you're transmitting the blood, the, uh, when you're transmitting the blood, uh, what a blood bank may, when you're transmitting the blood, you know, there are some infections which can transmit it through the blood. So we have to screen that things, okay? So which are the common ones here? Hepatitis B virus? Definitely, yes. We already spoke. IV drugs, uh, transfusion, BT blood transfusion is there. HCV? Definitely, yes. All blood bond. HIV also? Yes. Parvo B19? Definitely, yes. So all are right, one, two, three. So the, the viruses may, when you talk about the blood transmission infection, BT transmission, which are the viruses you should transmit? Uh, this is easy. Hepatitis B virus is very easy to remember. Hepatitis C virus, HIV virus, not your A and E viruses and all. Okay, those are not common. These are the common one, HIV, Hepatitis B, HCV, HIV, and your Parvo, just now Mr. Parvo, even your Epstein-Barr virus and CMV virus. These are common in your viruses. Okay, when you talk about the viruses, what about the bacteria? In bacteria, the most important one is the spirochetes. Spirochetes. Spirochetes is the most common. When you talk about spirochetes, you remember, right? Tryponema pallidum. Syphilis causing tryponema pallidum. And then your Borrelia. Borrelia, right? Borrelia. And then your Leptospira. These are the three things Leptospira you have to remember. Our. Apart from that, uh, you know, there's one Rickettsia, Rickettsia cause one is there, but it's okay. You do not remember. These TP, Tryponema, Leptospira is important. And then we we'll talk about the uh, parasites. Blood parasites were blood protozoans. What are they? So remember malaria, that is uh, plasmodium. Malaria plasmodium, that is, I write it here, plasmodium, it's better. Plasmodium, not only really plasmodium, what else we have? Trypanosoma, trypanosoma, trypanosoma comes then, that would be the Leishmania also, Leishmania also. And if plasmodium malaria comes, there is Babesia. They are for almost same features, Babesia, except it is transmitted by tichia. So these are, other, and toxoplasma. Toxoplasma pregnant lady. If you remember cat, cat is a definite host. Toxoplasma gondi. Okay. So these are blood bond. So you can expect a question of the blood transmission these days. Okay. So do the blood transmission. These are the infections. There is no clue bundle. You just start to remember it. It's easy. You These are the things that remain in the blood all the time. So that's what you have to be careful. So these are things we are screening. Okay. Right. Uh, now, next. Yeah. So answer one, two, three, four. Now, next question. Again, very nice question. Which is the uh, most common cause of spontaneous bacterial peritonitis? Spontaneous bacterial peritonitis is basically a primary. We have two types of peritonitis. We have two types of uh, peritonitis, right? We have primary and primary and secondary peritonitis, bacterial peritonitis. The primary one is also called as spontaneous. Secondary is due to GIT penetration, any gut penetration, no, any penetration injury, GIT, or normally also when your intestinal penetration happens, no, that time you have secondary peritonitis. So, what are the cost, which is the cost of agent? You know already, or doctors, you must be knowing already. It's also surgery question, uh, mostly. It's what? Escherichia coli. Escherichia coli is the most common cause. So, and I will not forget because this was my thesis topic also in my PG time. So, definitely it was Escherichia coli. Okay. So, this is the common. Escherichia coli is the common. So, Escherichia coli is the common one. That's it. Very simple. Okay. So, not only UTI, you not, E. coli is not only the most common cause of UTI, it's also most common cause of your bacterial peritonitis. 
peritonitis. Okay, remember, these are two things most common. Of course, E. coli causes many infections. Even meningitis, neonatal meningitis, it's in the second place after a group of streptococcus. But uh, you remember, these are the common ones. Peritonitis and UTI are common for Escherichia coli, apart from the diarrhea. Diarrhea will be a big list of diarrhea. Okay, right? Yeah. Next, and this one. Uh, now, which of the following statements is incorrect regarding the strongyloides? Strongyloides stercoralis. Okay. You know what? I'll give you a small clue and then we go to the strongyloides. Okay. Uh, let's go here. Let's go to I see, I have a picture. Yeah. So what happened? How to remember the strongyloides? The first clue what I'm going to give you is whenever you remember strongyloides, remember strong woman. Strong woman. Okay. Strong woman, first of all. She is like a you know, current. She's fast like a current. Okay. She's fast like a current. Second one, she is always hyper, hyper, hyper. She is hyper. That's it. And you know what is her favorite food for all these things? What's the secret? You know, she takes what? She takes the IV. IV, IV is basically, you know, what do you call in Hindi? This is IV God. IV God, uh, I, the, the small green color vegetable. Okay, I forgot the name of that. Okay. Uh, 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 yeah, not yeah, something else. Okay, I forgot the name of that. Okay, I we got. So if this is a shortcut. Why I gave this strong strong woman, strong woman ka no need men. So that means no man. That is no male worm. Okay, no man. Why is this strong strongyloidis? Strongyloidis ka yase yaad karo strongyloidis tercoralis. Why woman? There is no men means there is no only there is only female worm. Only female worm. I mean, there is a male worm, but that is not involved in the pathogenesis. Okay. So there is only female worm. No male worm. Okay. Current because the condition of this, it causes the larva migrants. That is called larva currents. Very super fast. Larva currents. It moves very, very fast. That's what's called larva current. Like a current. I told that's what strong woman is like a current. It's a question. This is also a question. This is also a question. Larva current. She's, she's, this is the one. See, this is the larva current. It, it, you know, it usually it gains by penetration. No, it enters by, strong is enters by penetration. That's what, what happened. It causes this one. Okay. Penetration and that larva, that is basically, which of this is basically a filariform larva. Okay. So this is the filariform larva. Filariform larva. We are going to talk about the cycle larva. So larva currents. Hyper, it causes something called hyper infection, severe infection in immunocompromised patients. That's what I told. They are hyper hyper. This question also asked. Hyper infections common with strongyloides. IV got because the drug of choice for strongyloides is many times as ivermectin. 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 Very simple. That's it. This is this you you will not miss any of this if you know the shortcut. But a little bit of pathogenesis. You should know that you know how this. Strong eloides enter into our body. Strong eloides enters into our body. There is a clue. How? Uh, you should know through barefoot, there are three infections which goes to the barefoot. You know how to remember? Remember my name, Sandy. S A N D Y is a silent. Santosh, my name, but they call me Sandy. Okay. So S A N, sand walks in barefoot. I'm, we are very poor. I'm, I'm garib, you know, so I walk in my barefoot only. Okay. So yes, for Strongyloides. And A for ancyclostoma. And N for nicator. Nicator americanus. Why I say barefoot? Because the worm, the filariform larva, which I told, okay, this one, see here, it enters. This the thing, this uh, we are uh, this one. It starts from here. First of all, what happened? That yeah, rhabdidiform. Uh, it starts here. I'm sorry. It this is, should be erased. One second. Just I'm going to erase this. Huh. One second. Eraser. Huh. Okay. Now, so what I'm going to do is that look at this picture. It's starting from here. So we are barefoot. So what happened? This filariform larva starting here. It enters it through our leg, and after entering into the leg. It goes to the becomes a where from leg means that goes to venous system. So sare vein go through, it goes to the heart, heart, it goes to the heart, and from heart it comes to your lung, you know, lung goga, lung say again. What happens to regurgitation? It enters into a GIT tract here. You know? Adult female, uh, so the filariform larva, it goes to the lung, and from lung again it goes to where to your intestine. In intestine, what happens? It develops into the adult, adult female worm. There is no in strongyloides. I told only in strongyloides there is no male. Okay, so just the adult, it's over VV pair. That's what we call strong women are over VV pairs. They direct without any boys help. They lay eggs. Okay, that's what over VV pairs. Okay, so uh, over VV pairs. So they lay the eggs. Only female worm lays the egg. And after that, that female worm when it lays the egg. 
that X, what happened? The moment it hatches, it, it goes out, it becomes a labrity form larvae. It doesn't stay longer. Immediately hatches out. That's what in stool, where you see for labrity form, many times you will see only the labrity form larvae in the stool. And this labrity form either becomes filariform and go auto infection, or it just goes to the stool and stool may again, labrity form, you know, it develops into uh, uh, adult and male form here in, uh, not in, in, inside our body, only female form. When you go to the soil, male, female, eggs, etc., that will be formed. But inside our body, only adult, it's a magic. It's really a magic. Adult male, adult female, she just lays the eggs. That eggs develop immediately hatches the rabbitty form larva. Okay, that's it. Excuse me. <clears throat> so for you, you have to remember is that strong sandy is okay. Now let's go to a question. Now it's going to be very easy. You're going to make a good, uh, you're going to answer it very easily. So look at this. Uh, um, parasites in the upper part of the GT. Definitely, yes, because after regurgitation from the lung, the filariform larva it goes us to GT only. That's the right answer. Larva currents means it's the fast moving rash on abdomen. That's what I told you. I showed you the picture. This is the larva currents. It moves very, very fast, rapidly under the skin. Eh, na? So, either this is the before reaching the lung, it just moves here and there. Okay. And then next one, ivermectin. I just told you, uska favorite kya pasand hai uska? IV God. IV God. Definitely treatment. Ho gaya. Ivermectin, IV God. Ho gaya. Systemic strongyloidis infection seen in immunocompetent. No, 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 no. Because Systemic strong loyalties, that is, they're talking about the hyperinfection. Hyperinfection is common in which you immunocompromised patient. Mein, okay. So what happened in hyperinfection? Basically, there is a recurrent autoinfection. I told you this rapidity from larva, instead of going out, what happened? It goes recurrent uh, autoinfection in immunocompromised patients, like right? HIV patient, steroid user. In these patients in HIV and all, what happened? The recurrent autoinfection happens, and that leads to what excess what excess filariform larvae? There'll be increased filariform filariform count. And uh, that will cause a lot of problem to the patient. It can cause a lot of lung problem, intestinal problem. Everything can happen. That's called hyperinfection. Okay. So in usually what happens in this case, IgE usually goes down. Instead of going up, it goes down. Okay. That's one more uh, thing to remember. But remember, hyperconia, strong elitis. Hyper. Current cone, strong, strong elitis. Strong woman. Strong woman is hyper. Strong woman is like a current. Okay, that's all. And she eats what? IV got. For a strength, she eats IV got. Finished. It's much only strong, ladies. You don't have to worry at all. And remember me. I what? Sandy. Sandy is S, S, S for strong, ladies. A for ancestral N for nicator. Sandy, I walk in barefoot. I don't have slippers. I'm poor. That's what, what happened. This three larva, they penetrate my leg and then they go through my veins and they go to my lung and then from my lung, that is heart and then lung and then from my lung, it recurrates and go to my intestine. Intestinally, this filariform becomes, uh, goes into adult female, only female in strong loyalties. Then it lays the egg, egg becomes rabbitiform, rabbitiform goes in the stool and then cycle continues. Okay, very, very simple, very easy. Okay, now next one. Huh. Now, another question, another my favorite. This is, excuse me, I'm sorry. Yeah, now the next question. Again, this is one of my favorite questions. You guys also might be liking it. Which is the incorrect statement regarding GRDSS. GRDSS, you know, you my favorite. So let's let's go to GRD and then come back. It'll be much easier. So this is the thing. This is the thing you have to remember. You know, GRDS asks every exam, every time they have a question. That's what GRD is something you should have to keep in your mind. You can't leave it. Okay. So this is gear. Okay, this is gear. Gear vegetable. Gear vegetable. See what I'm doing. I'm taking, I'm I'm bored of this gear. So what I'm doing, I'm hitting with my racket. Tennis racket with my tennis racket. Tennis racket. I'm hitting the gear. Okay, I'm hitting the gear with the angry. Okay, I'm hitting the gear with the angry. Then what happened? Gear falls down. Gear will fall down. Okay, that's one thing. And uh, whenever my mom cooks, whenever mom cooks gear, you know what happened? I get so I get in tears. First of all, I go in tears. Then I get angry. Then I get so angry. And then sometimes, you know what, I put a string around myself and I try to suicide, you know, just for a joke, okay? I put a string on myself and I try to suicide. Okay, now we got everything here now. Now let's go to this. This much about it. Yeah, sir, what is this? Why did you bring this story? It looks very uh, stupid story, right? Okay, Gia because Giardia. Giardia, you know, this is a protozoa. It's a protozoa. Tennis racket, say, so why did I hit? The shape. The shape is tennis racket or... You say it as tears. Oh, not only that. When I cook here, why I'm tearing angry? Because I get what? Steatoria. I get steatoria. Fat mole absorption, right? Because I get fat mole absorption. Steatoria. Okay. The shape is tennis racket. Tear, tear. Gear. Fall down. Why? 
the motility what is the motility falling leaf motility falling leaf that was a question asked you always confuse this with the trichomonas trichomonas may t for t twitching that also looks similar but usme single nucleus hota hai here it's a falling leaf tennis racket why i say see because tennis or tier you see the shape it's like a tennis racket there is center axo style and then you see two nucleus then there are four pairs of flagella here if you remember this is one pair two pair three pair and here one four pair four pairs of flagella you can see okay four pairs of flagella i see this is the originally this was the picture and this is the cyst form this is the cyst that is the trophozoic form this is cyst form this is a trophozoic trophozoic and the cyst form okay and what i do i'm angry because the shape is again it looks like an angry man tear also same it's the same meaning any uh, angry man face tear shaped all same same steatorias commonly squid which is the uh, causing fat mole absorption or steatoria fat mole absorption fat mole absorption steatoria this one mole absorption string test because i told you again what you have to do if you want to catch they take this dia properly you take the string and put it this is string with the tablet there it's like it looks like a tablet capsule it's basically a capsule where your dia will stick so put it inside the mouth and leave it till the duodenum till the duodenum it goes and leave it for a few hours and then you take out so what happened here dia will be sticking here then that i make a wet mount and then i see for the, the falling leaf motility and whatever i need okay i'll do excuse me excuse me i'll do that okay that's all this much only about the dia very simple and treatment is metronidazole you know metro get out of the way get comes treatment is always get out of the way when the metro train is coming when the metro train is coming you should get out of the way g for giardia giardia you know e for entamoeba histolytica that is the amoebiosis and t for your trichomonas trichomonas also frequently all are frequent asked questions okay so this metro for metro uh, treatment is for all these things okay very very simple so your question now now let's go here Ah, huh. now, uh, yeah. Now let's go to our question. Stool examine for cyst at two to three days interval. Yes, you remember that. Whenever patient have steatoria or any diarrhea type or steatoria comes, when they send the sample, just one stool sample is not enough. We sometimes we can miss the uh, trophozoite or the cyst. So we tell them to send after two three days interval again. Repeat it. You know, two to three some more the sample they give, the more chance you know we 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 hunt for the. uh for this uh, giardia okay so that's the right question colonoscopy colonoscopy aspirate gives highest diagnostic let's stop there okay let's stop there it occurs by injection of contaminated water definitely yes giardia is a pico oral only that's what it enters okay enters to the oral cavity and then you get it giardia has a flagellated trophozoite of course i just showed you the picture it has four flagella this is also right colonoscopy aspirate no we are not doing colonoscopy we are doing what we are doing the string test we are because it's usually in the upper part duodenum is usually in the upper part na giardia is usually giardia lamblia uh, it's usually in the upper part so we don't it's usually in the maximum duodenum jejunum only not goes down so colonoscopy is used colonoscopy put it from down what is the use so it's not so that's the wrong answer so answer is b colonoscopy given high dimension no it's wrong okay this much this are the right answer it's okay okay now next question Jadia is over, and I hope thing it's easy. And now this one, another important question, very nice question. Type two necrotizing fasciitis. Type two necrotizing. Okay, let's talk just the ne necrotizing fasciitis. Okay, caused by. So when you talk about necrotizing fasciitis, picture was uh, excuse me, the picture was not given. The picture was I added the picture later. Okay, so this is the picture was not. They just give only necrotizing fasciitis. This is the necrotizing fasciitis. Necrotizing it looks like a gangrene, not gas gangrene of clostridium perfringens. We are talking just the necrotizing the tissues, just necrotized here. Okay, so now what is the cause? Is it a group A streptococcus? What is the other name for group A streptococcus? It's also called streptococcus pyogenes. Streptococcus pyogenes. Okay. Vibrio vulnificus. Uh, Vibrio vulnificus also causes some, uh, you know, this type of ulcers and all. But that's not necrotizing fasciitis. Okay, and what about your uh, Staphylococcus aureus? No, it's a Staphylococcus infection also causes a lot of infection. It causes usually what? Carbuncle, furuncle, abscess, right? All those things. Okay, folliculitis and those things. Not the necrotic part that it will not go. Clostridium septicum. Clostridium septicum also can cause what? Gas gangrene. If you remember, in gas gangrene, not only Clostridium perfringens, even septicum and novae, other species also can cause. So it's all out, out, out. So group uh, the Staphylococcus pyogenes is the main thing. Uska the virulent factor there. This hyaluronidase is very dangerous one. There's a lot of other factors to invade, invade and cause this infection. So it, your answer is group A Staphylococcus. Please remember, group A Staphylococcus pyogenes are same. Many times you confuse with group A, group B. Group B is Agalactiae. A is not agalactiae. A for 
not always apple. A is not always apple. So A is not apple. Group A is streptococcus pyogens. Now pyogens mean you get this necrotizing phase. This is after you usually necrotize. You do a debridement. So debridement ke baad, but this is the thing. Okay. Now what is this condition? So when we talk about streptococcus pyogens, then there are other conditions which you should know. Uh, this group A, group A streptococcus, we also call this gas. Okay, gas. It streptococcus pyogens same all same. It also causes other apart from this necrotizing fasciitis. It also causes cellulitis, cellulitis, and it causes er erisi pilla, and also it causes scarlet fever. Okay, I give you a clue here. This is what necrotizing. Any E E E comes all cellulitis E, erysipela E, scarlet E, all this E E comes. It is caused by your streptococcus pyogenes. That's the way I remember. It looks a bit tricky. E always is enemy or bad. I always say you no know, evil, evil, evil. Streptococcus pyogenes is evil. So E for evil. So you check for E. Okay, but like carbuncle, furuncle, abscesses, staphylococcus aureus. Excuse me, excuse me. But when you're talking about the skin conditions. Now, ideally, streptococcus pyogenes cause pharyngitis. That's one sure you know. It's the most common cause of bacterial pharyngitis. Okay, true membrane. Uh, but in skin, may it causes this condition. Necrotizing fasciitis. This is cellulitis. This picture is the cellulitis. Okay, and it's common in diabetic patients. If you see the red color, orange, pudy, orange uh, color and all, they call different names of the swelling. Cellulitis, erysipela, and then scarlet fever. Very, very important. Okay, so these are the important things that you know about when you talk about Thing. And why they say type 2? Type 2 is necrotizing means, type 2 necrotizing is usually monomicrobial. What's type 1 then? We have type 1. Type 1 is polymicrobial. Type 1 is polymicrobial. That means many microbes. So you can't say 1. Type 2, just now we spoke, that is your streptococcus pyogens. Type 3 is your gas gangrene. Gas gangrene, that's your clostridium perfringens. Gas gangrene. Remember? Very simple. That's it. One is polymicrobial, two is streptococcus pyogenes, and three is your gas gangrene. They usually don't ask this detail, but you know, you know, I don't know, from surgical point of view, whatever, if they ask, you have to just, you know, remember these things. Okay, that's it. Ah. Now, next question. This is another important question here. Which operatic uh, systemic mycosis caused a deep tissue necrosis in COVID outbreak? Okay. Uh, which opportunistic systemic uh, mycosis cause a deep tissue. Oppor First of all, they say it's opportunistic infection. So now, what is the opportunistic infection have we have here? Uh, and see, there are a lot of clues. One, they've given already COVID outbreak. Another thing, this, this causes a deep tissue necrosis it causes and opportunistic infection. You remember, they, they used to say something, they used to call what? Black black fungi, black fungus, black fungi, black, black mycosis, black black death, I, not black death, sorry. Black, black, everything was black, black, black that time, right? Okay. So, uh, first of all, it's an opportunistic infection. So when it's opportunistic means sporotrichosis is out. Sporotrichosis is, it does, it's systemic and it's a systemic mycosis. So sporotrichosis is not causing systemic, it causes subcutaneous. It's a subcutaneous dimorphic, okay? So that is, I ruled out this, okay, ruled out. And they have said opportunistic. Uh, systemic, uh, and they said deep tissue. There's no deep tissue. Cochidium mycosis is also dimorphic fungi, but usually it, causes, it, it affects the lung and some mild form of skin only. So that is also out. I'm not going to include that. Okay, it's dimorphic. Okay. Histoplasmosis is also, it's also dimorphic, but it, 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 it's not that much common. Usually it affects what? Lung only, like cochidiomycosis. All this dimorphic fungi, they cause lung infections most commonly. Then they can spread slowly, not this much, especially not deep tissue and all. So the answer of this one is your mucormycosis. Mucormycosis. So how to remember the mucormycosis? Mucormycosis or zygomycosis, they are same. Don't confuse. Zygo, motor, someone. I always say motor, zygo, mycosis. This is the right answer. Deep tissue necrosis. That because of the necrosis only, it's black color. You remember COVID, may, many people we came with the face, eye, you know, everything was going necrotic, necrotic. So this is the exact picture. If you see this picture, this will cover everything. So please remember, this is what? This is this is called reno cerebral, reno, reno cerebral mucor mycosis. Reno cerebral mucor mycosis renal cerebral mucor mycosis this is the most common cause of a form of mycosis otherwise also called zygomycosis zygomycosis how i remember i remember mota zaman 
Mota, Zaman, Zaman Zayel, any boy's name, remember a good this thing. I always for me it's easy, Zaman. Okay. Mota Zaman. He's really Motu also. Why Motu? You see here. When you see in the when you stain it with the uh, any of the fungal stain, what you see, you see a wide hyphae. Acute, it's not acute angle. Here, what happened? It is a wide, and here it is, it is at right angle, perpendicular are at right and somewhat right, wide angle, right? Or you can say wide angle, wide hyphae, wide angle, and no septae. Just opposite to your aspergillus. Aspergillus may it will be acute angle and septate. Here, no septate. That's what I call motor samanka. Uska shape nahi hai. Septa nahi hai. Kuch shape nahi hai. Oh, wide. Sare wide wide. Motor motor hota hai. And look at here. If you see this one, it's like this. The hyphae and uska branching aise hota hai. It is like not the acute angle. It is like wide angle. Na? Ye pura wide angle. Not acute. But if you see in the uh, aspergillus, it will be like this. In aspergillus, it will be uh, acute angle. Like this. Acute angle. Here, it's all you know, wide, it's like this wide angle, you know, wide angle. So these are wide, wide, without any septate. That is the characteristic feature for your uh, mucormycosis. Okay, mucormycosis. So what happened? Reno cerebral mycosis because of black fungi. That's what they call, they used to call, that's, that's not exactly, it's not black. Because of the, the deep tissue necrosis, it usually causes blindness. It can go to the brain and affect your brain. Uh, proptosis, so many things can cause. Okay, so that's what in COVID time, it, this was the one of the dangerous one. And what are the under the zygomycosis? You know, there are three things, rhizopus. Mucor and absidia, absidia, rhizopus means the three types. Okay, in rhizopus means the root is at the point, mucor may no root. Uh, this is inter intermediate root, intermediate root between the nodes. They have this is root at nodes, at node just below the node. Here, internal root. Okay, but in mucormy, there's not. It's okay. If you just remember, but this remember three species. Ram. The shortcut is Ram. Ram mucormycosis. Okay. Mota Zaman. That's it. These are the things you should remember about the zygomycosis. Very simple and easy, right? Zygo, zygo means Mota Zaman, Uska, all these problems. Okay. Right. Now, uh, next question. Now, uh, yeah, this also, this must be easy for you guys. You all remember knowing which fungal infection is caused by inoculation of the fungal element using a thorn. Whenever the word thorn comes, you know what I'm going to remember? Whenever the word thorn comes, I'm going to give, think about a rose garden. Rose, rose garden, mein ta, rose plant, mein ta, ye hoga, na? there'll be thorn in rose plant only. Na? So let's go to this picture now. So this is the rose garden. Okay. So rose garden, this is our wonderful rose gardener. This is also called rose gardener's disease. Rose gardener's disease we call. This is a rose gardener. Why? Because our sporty, I call him the sporty rose gardener because his name is porotrichosis. Porotrichosis. So what happened? Rose ka thorn, and it hits, it hits his arm or leg, whatever. Even it hits here. What happened? This is the uh, 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 this is the lesion is getting. You see, row of ulcer along the lymphatic. He gets the row of Sporotrichosis caused by sporotrichus shankai. It is caused by sporotrichus shankai. Okay, sporotrichosis. Row of ulcer along lymphatic. Ye, ye, ye picture, ye question, wow, many times repeated. So you can't miss. Like, you know, few questions, whatever the questions repeated here, many are like repeated again and again. So you, if you're preparing for your postcard examination or FMG examination or INSAT, it doesn't matter. You have to know this thing and it is very easy. You'll get it. Okay. Apart from that, you know what? This rose gardener, I'll give you some clue about this rose gardener. This gardener, you know what is his favorite thing? He uh, smokes cigar. He smokes cigar. And he, at nighttime, he loves the stars. He loves to watch at the stars. And you know what? He like, he has a splendor bike. He has a splendor bike. Okay, splendor bike. And of course, he gives roses, you know, give roses to girls. He loves, he is a gardener himself and he gives roses to girls. And another one, you know, to impress the girls, you know what he used to use the... Uh, Itar, itar perfume. You know, he used the itar perfume. Okay, sir. What is this new story again? Okay, I'm coming. Okay. Now, a row of ulcer along the lymphatic. So, question asked Rose Gardener. See this one, this one, this picture, this picture. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, this picture, if you see, look at this. How does it look? It looks like a star. That's what I told he likes star because that is called asteroid body 
That's the question repeated many times. The picture was came or they'll ask asteroid body. Star means asteroid. Asteroid body. Oh yeah, asteroid body. This is in the this is in your stain. When you do a, a, a biopsy stain but with a PAS stain, you, PAS stain or anything, a hematoxin, eoxygen stain, any stain, any fungal stain, you see this asteroid body or sugar or it also you can say just sugar appearance. You know sugar. So sugar. Cigar bundle is also seen in Mycobacterium leprae. Don't forget, it's seen in Mycobacterium leprae also. Okay, so that's the thing. And there's something called splendor hopley phenomenon. This is more a uh, pathological thing, splendor hopley. This all this, you know, the cells break and they go peripheral. That those cells splendor hopley phenomena. You remember the name. That is important. Splendor hopley phenomena is seen in the this thing. And roses to girl, because look at this in LPCB, this is called rosette appearance. Rosette appearance, okay. Rosette appearance. I'm sorry, I just have to go back. Um, yeah, okay. We call it as the rosette appearance. Rosette appearance. That is also a question in LPCB stain. In LPCB, LPCB, you know, it's a lactophenol cotton blue stain for the fungus. And then ethar, why? Because the treatment, the treatment is atroconazole. Eight, previously it was potassium hydrate. Now it is atroconazole. It's a drug of atroconazole. But systemic means you're going with amphotericin B. Any systemic uh, mycosis, you'll go uh, with this infection, you go. But otherwise, the drug of choice is ethar because atroconazole. That's it. This is very simple, easy. There's no any other question can come from the rose garden. And of course, it's common in Himalayas. Himalayas may rose gardens are high. So usually in history, you'll have a word Himalayan region. Okay, that's all. So now what about this question? So this question, did I? Uh, yeah, I, I thought I didn't mark the answer. So for this question, so when I, uh, the clue is given already, inoculation fungal by thorn. So thorn means it's a, it's a rose plant. Rose plant is a gardener's. That is your spore or three courses. That's it, right? See, mycetoma may, it's not a thorn. Mycetoma to the injury. Mycetoma is injury. Mucor, mucor aspergillus is just acquired, you know, because when you make, when you make compromise, immunity goes down, it just occurs. Mycetoma is due to injury. That is a different story. So, porotricosis is the answer. Okay, right. Next one. Now, which are the following stories? In chikungunya fever. In chikungunya fever, uh, in chikungunya fever, they ask, which is a true, true one. So now, it is, uh, you know, chikungunya fever, Okay, uh, let's do this. It is transmitted by the Culex mosquito. Does it transmit Culex mosquito? No, not. We'll come there. Okay, not. Effective vaccine is available. Do we think that you have a vaccine for chicken gunia? Do we have any effective vaccine? No. If we have, why we get chicken gunia now, right? No. Incubation is four to seven days? Definitely, yes. Okay, within a week. Because within a week. One of the problems, this is the main thing. Whenever you have chicken gunia, you will never forget the joint pain in your whole life. Once you get chicken gunia joint pain, lifelong will remember because that's very severe joint pain. That is right. Okay. Now, so chicken gunia may not much. See, most important thing is that you should know the mosquito. This is the mosquito. Which mosquito is this? Can you guess? You see the spots and everything. So that is the tiger mosquito. Tiger mosquito or Aedes. A-E-D-S. Aedes mosquito. Aedes or tiger mosquito. Okay. You see very gigantic, you know, just like a tiger only. With all the spots, strikes like the tiger in the body and all. So it looks like a thing only. Okay, so this is fine. Now, what are the uh, ADS mosquitoes? So what are the diseases you should know? That is at least you should know all the important fevers. Your dengue fever, number one. Then your chicken gunia fever. Chicken gunia fever. And then your Zika fever. And then your yellow fever. At least these important things you should know. These are the common ones. They ask questions. Okay, mosquito. What about the Culex? When you talk about the Culex mosquito, when you talk about okay, I'll write it here only. When you talk about the Culex mosquito, Culex means I always tell you to remember coolies, coolies who working in the railway station, poor coolies for them. Okay, Culex mosquito important diseases. Coolie कहाँ पर होते एक तो जापान में होता है जापानीज एनकेफलाइटिस Japanese encephalitis. Okay, Japan mein hota hai. Coolies are in Japan. And coolies are also where in the West Nile. West Nile fever or West Nile encephalitis. West Nile is caused by all the mosquitoes. But yeah, commonly it's coolie, culex. Okay, Japan mein, West Nile mein. Or don't forget elephantiasis. Or our Ushere uh, Bankat ne elephantiasis. Elephantiasis. So elephantiasis because coolie ka kya hota hai? Coolie ka leg mein. 
साथ चप्पल नहीं है सो ऑटोमेटिकली क्या होगा दे विल गेट एलिफेंट ओके इन्फेक्शन सो दीज आर द्यूलेक्स एंड प्लास्मोडियम मलेरिया वी ऑलरेडी स्पोक प्लास्मोडियम वायवैक्स ओवर दे ऑल आर प्लास्मोडियम स्पीशियल दैट इज बाई अनोफ्लस मस्किटो अनोफ्लस मस्किटो इज फॉर प्लास ओनली फॉर मलेरिया आई राइट दैट ऑल्सो अनोफ्लस मस्किटो अनोफ्लस मस्किटो इज फॉर द प्लास्मोडियम दैट इज मलेरिया प्लास्मोडियम ओके गॉड इट दैट्स इट हाँ नाउ Now look at this question. Okay, what is the answer now? So answer is incubation four to seven days, right? Three and four. So answer is C. Three and four is right. So three. This effective vaccine is not available for chicken body. And joint pain is so prominent, and so please remember that's it. Okay, yeah, that's all. Now next one. Now next one. In which parasitic infection man nail man transmission is seen? Another very nice question. Uh, this question you might be confused, so you it's better to rule out. Always try to rule out with questions which are tough. So now how I'm going to rule out? Fish tapeworm. Fish tapeworm is basically Diphlo, Diphlo botrium latum, Diphlo botrium latum. Fish tapeworm, other name, right? So now how to remember here? Diphlo, how I remember? Phil, Mr. Phil. वो क्या करता है उसका साइकिल में ही इज कैरिंग अ फिश यू गॉट इट सो द इंटरमीडिएट होस्ट और साइकिल का साइकिल हो गया एंड अदर वन इज फिश दैट्स इट सो स्मेल तो आया नहीं है सो दिस इज रॉन्ग यू गॉट इट फिश टेफम इज डायफिलोम फिल इज अ फिश सेलर इज अ फिश मार्केट फिश सेलर है ठीक है इज अ फिश फिश सेलर ओके सो साइकिल में फिश सुबह सुबह लेके जाता है सो फिल फिल और डिफ्लो बोथ्रियम सो साइकिल इज साइक्लो फिश इज दिस टू इंटरमेट दर इज नो स्नाइल का तो नहीं है सो मैन इज डेफिनेट एंड दिस टू इंटरमेट होस्ट ओके मलेरियम स्नेल नो मलेरियम इज अ मस्किटो एनोफ्लस मस्किटो सो वो भी नहीं है आनकोसेरकियासिस आनकोसेरकियासिस दिस इज कॉस्ट बाय वॉट यू रिमेम्बर दिस इज दी कॉस्ट बाय सिमूल Loom. Simulum is basically what a black fly. It's a black fly. I always remember black simu. Pura naam hai. Anko sirf ke valve loose. Wo kya karta? Valve bus me jaane ka time river ke andar wo valve bus gir gaya. He got river blindness. Right? River blindness. And that's complete story. I'm not going to say that thing. Just remember, it is caused by a black fly. Anko sirf ka is basically caused by simu. Black simu. Black simran. Black simran. सिमरन यूजुअली फेयर होता है बट यू रिमेंबर फॉर नाउ ब्लैक सिमरन का क्या है ऑनकोसर्कियासिस है ओके ऑनकोसर्कियो वाल्वुलस है ब्लैक सिमरन को सो द ओनली लेफ्ट आउट इज सिस्टोसोमियासिस सो इवन इफ यू डोंट नो आल्सो यू कैन बाय दिस थिंग यू कैन हैव वन क्लू इज स्नेल एंड सिस्टोसोमियासिस दे हैव अ क्लू ओके दैट इज आल्सो क्लू ओके सो फाइन नाउ सिस्टोसोमियासिस आल्सो सो ओके लेट्स गो टू द सिस्टोसोमियासिस नाउ सिस्टोसोमियासिस का साइकिल दिस विल बी इजी इफ आई शो यू द साइकिल राइट सो नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन सो द सिस्टोसोमियासिस का साइकिल लेट्स सी सॉरी First, let's see the cycle. So look at here. So now what happened? Uh, the first thing is starting from here. Uh, here, the egg, uh, egg in if egg will be there in the fecus, right? It will be in the fecus and it hatches out and all like this. Egg will be hatched into what? Releases the miracidia. Miracidia you call. Then this miracidia, this goes into the snail. Again, snail may it goes things or not. Thing happens. The idea is cercaria is the main thing here. Cercaria. The cercaria is the main thing. Cystosomiasis ka. It penetrates the skin. penetrates the skin like strongyloides like sandy sand penetrates here cysto sister also penetrates the skin sister also penetrates okay it the cercaria penetrates the skin and then in the, it goes into the skin in the same story then circulation migration into the portal blood and all and then they become adult worm okay they become adult worm it all happens in the uh, intestine we're talking about here when it penetrates the skin then after one by one place it goes uh, circulation migrate and then goes to the intestine and intestine again it matures into adult worm see some of them goes to the bladder like hematobium goes to the bladder rest all goes to the intestine ka plexus that all the see when the portal blood it goes to the uh, here it is see, mesenteric venules of bowel and some will go the, these these two mansoni and japonicum will go to the intestinal ka mesenteric plexus whereas your hematobium goes to the bladder and then again they cause the infection goes out to the urine that goes to stool and you save it okay so this is the big story but at least now you remember the uh, the, the idea is that cystosomiasis snail so snail has a important role here snail comes here okay so snail has a important role here this one okay so man snail combination is here only okay cystosomiasis okay right Now, next question. Drug of choice of cystosomiasis. When they ask, they always ask something. Okay. So now the clue is, 
when you talk about the uh, platyhelminthes. Platyhelminthes means they are the flat worms. Flat worms, okay, flat. So flat worms means either it is cestode or it is the trematode. You know that one, trematode. Cesta means cesta is a tapeworm. Cesta is tapeworm. Trematode tree. Tree se kya banogi? Flute banogi. Fluke. Tree se fluke banogi. Fluke worms. Okay. So now for all these cases, for all these cases, your treatment for all platyhelminthes ka, what do you give? You give a flat prisles. Okay, prisles. You know what is a prisil? This is a prisil. Oh, I didn't draw the picture. I'm sorry. Prisils, you know, prisils is that the flat that uh, many people must be knowing that it, it looks like this, you know, like a, um, it's made up of duck. It's delicious, salty, sweet. Everything is there in US and all you can get. It's like a, it's like some, uh, what do you say? Uh, it's, it's a fried item only. It's a dish. Prisils, okay? It, it's a flat. It is flat and it is different, different shapes like this. In US, you see, if you go, commonly you see on the roadside people are eating, you know? It just looks like a snake, you know, like a snake. Yeah, exactly. We say the snake is rolled and tied, you know, that type of thing is the pretzels. So P for pretzels or flat pretzels. I mean to say the drug of choice for all the cestotrematode is the prasiquantel. Pretzels, prasiquantel, prasiquantel. Okay. Prasiquantel is the drug of choice. But there are exceptions. What are the exceptions? We are going to see the exceptions. Exceptions are basically... In cestode for echinococcus, echinococcus, what you use or hydatid for hydatid, hydatid, we have exception and also for in uh, trematode, one exception is there, that is your, uh, which is the exception, fasciol, fasciola hepatica, fasciola hepatica. Okay, so there is an exception for this one. There is an exception for this one. What is the exception? We are going to talk now. So, for the echinococcus, the drug is albendazole. You give albendazole. Okay, albendazole ka kaise yaad karna? Chino. Chino pants, you know, right? They are popular these days. Men's or women, they are wearing the chino pants that can bend. You can always bend the chino pants. Okay, bend. You can bend the chino pants. Okay. You remember like that. I'll just a question. Prasi control is a question. And face your lapses me kya how you remember. In your face, you do what you do. We all are patriotic people and we love our India. So in a face, we put what? Tricolor. We put the tricolor Indian flag. Excuse me, let me see if I have that. Oh, I didn't put that picture. Okay, that doesn't matter. Okay, so what I do, what I do is that I put a tricolor on my face. Tricolor. Okay. Face me, I put a tricolor, the orange, white, and blue color. Okay. Uh, green, orange, white, and green color. Okay, you know, for the cricket match and everything you put, no, on the face, tricolor. So the answer for face lepatica is triclabendazole. 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 Triclab means tricolor. Remember, like the tricolor. Tricolor on my face. Tricolor on my Indian flag. Tricolor on my face. Triclabendazole for your facial lepatica. That's the rest. All are prosequented. So now let's come to this question. So in this question, they asked, asked cystosome. Cystosome, yes, this means it will come under where? It comes under the trematodes, right? It comes under the trematodes. So all trematodes except fasciole, you're giving what? Prasiquantel. So that is the answer. That's it. Okay. So we have finished this question. Cystosome is good. Drug is over. So our sisters like pretzels. Sisters, they eat what? Pretzels. The pretzels, the one which is the American pretzels, I told them. That one. Okay. That's it. Now, next. Which of the uh, following infection is not transmitted by Aedes. Just now we spoke about Aedes mosquitoca. Sare fevers ajata, which is not there. So dengue fever, yes, it is spreaded. Zika, yes. Yellow fever, yes. West Nile, no. So West Nile. So West Nile is usually commonly spread by what? Culex. So this is the answer. Okay. So that's the answer. West Nile fever. Right. Next one. This is a more a PSM, but of course, definitely it has a role in a microbiology also. Entry of the organism to the maximum infectivity. Whenever the word maximum infectivity comes, it's a generation time. Maximum generation. Maximum generation. So my answer would be here is, answer here is the yeah, generation time. But what about incubation? Incubation period, if you see, see this generation time. Generation time is since the starting of the infection, 
since the starting of the infection till the maximum infectivity. Incubation period is from the starting of the infection here, starting of the infection till the first symptom, okay? From the starting of the infection to the first symptom. Okay, here it is latent period again, it is latent period is basically start of the infection uh, uh, to the maximum uh, uh, start again. Okay, this is the maximum infection. Yes, start of the infection till till. Oh, I'm sorry. From the start of the infection, here it is. You see that I'm going to write it here. Sorry, the pain. Uh, from the start of the infection to the maximum. Uh, uh, from the infection time, from the bacteria entrance to the starting of the pathogenicity. Starting of the pathogenicity. Okay, pa just started the infection has entered. And then till the pathogenicity, you call this a latent period. Serial interval is different. Serial interval is, you know, you take that serial interval, the one complete, this thing, you know, one interval, then one interval like that. That's the serial it goes. So here, generation time is the answer. Maximum, uh, uh, maximum infection generation time till the first symptom incubation period. Latent period is till the starting, uh, till the pathogenicity. Then the maximum pathogenicity happens. Not the infectivity, the pathogenicity has started. Okay, that's it. Okay, so this is the uh, maximum infectivity period. Okay, more detail will be in your PSM. I hope they will teach you that one. Okay, yeah, but still remember generation maximum infectivity. That don't have to remember. Generation means maximum infectivity. Okay, I'm sorry, my neck is yeah. Okay, uh, now next, next question: Which of the vaccine can prevent the cancer? This is an easy, easy question, easy PC question. You must be knowing, but even no, it doesn't matter. So we have, uh, there are some vaccines, some infections, a vaccine that can prevent the cancer. Hepatitis B vaccine, definitely yes. Which cancer? Liver cancer. It prevents you from the liver cancer. So that's right. This is right. Hepatitis B vaccine, can, which cancer? Your cervical cancer. Not only cervical cancer, it also decreases in men, penile cancer, anal cancer, and female apart from cervix even, Vaginal cancer. So these are the cancers prevented by H influenza vaccine. What about the H influenza vaccine? No, it's not. It is a vaccine, but there is no not for cancer. There is no any cancer. HCV vaccine we don't have. We don't have any effective vaccine for giving cancer. That's also out. So your answer is only one and two. Answer is A. Okay. Now uh, HPV vaccine, you know that is vaccine, you know good. Eh? But cervical cancer, you know that HPV vaccine two things. What are they? One is the bivalent is cervarix. Cervarix. And other one is your Gardasil. Gardasil, right? These are two vaccines, you know. Cervarix, Cervarix and Gardasil common. This is Cervarix is bivalent and Gardasil is quadri, quadrivalent. Bivalent means it is only for which one? Which is cervical cancer called HP, what? 16 and 18. 16 and 18. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Only two. Quadri means four. So what are the four? HPV, 6, 11. 6, 11 is the one which causes what? If you remember, uh, your laryngeal papilloma it causes anogenital warts, it causes condyloma, acuminata, all those things, okay? And 16 and 18, this is the four. And also we have Gardasil 9. Gardasil 9, may, there are nine strains. Apart from these, there are other five. I mean, totally there are nine, uh, uh, nine strains, covers the nine strains of HPV. So these are the things. And one more thing, all the vaccines, the HPV vaccine, for HPV vaccine, which is the segment which is used L1 segment of the HPV virus. L1 segment is used for the vaccine manufacture. Remember that also, okay? So these are the questions. Anything, Cervarix, okay? Cervarix, my spellings are sometimes horrible. Huh? Please forgive me for that. <laughs> okay, so these are the things, okay? So hepatitis B, we have very good vaccine and HPV. So don't forget to take these two vaccines. Very important. Especially for uh, sexually active people, you must take these two vaccines, okay? So because uh, both, both if you see, both are uh, one of the highest risk factors for both is the sex activity. And of course, for uh, hepatitis B virus, is IV drugs and uh, 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 IV drug, uh, most risky, you know, IV drug. Yeah, that's it. Okay. Now, next, look at this question. Another interesting question. Now, a lot of questions come from tuberculosis also. That's expected, right? Always expected. So which of the following is false regarding Montotext? Montotext, you know, it is a sort of, uh, the latent TB killer, the test which is used for latent TB. Now, whenever it comes to latent TB, we are using it for latent TB to diagnose the latent TB. Apart from IGRA, we are using Montex test, the IGRA test that ELISA gold interferon test. And so for latent TB. Now, what is the technique? So let's start the, before going to the options. Let's see the technique. Did I mark the previous answer? Yes. 
Okay. Now, how is the technique? So, what you do is that you uh, you use a tuberculin syringe. This is the tuberculin syringe. Okay, it's called tuberculin syringe. In this syringe, you're going to take how much? 0.1 ml of one tuberculin unit of this uh, uh, PPD protein. Purified protein derivative. Purified protein derivative. Okay, I'm taking this one. And then what I'm injecting inside the skin, after injecting, I have to make, a, when I give subcutaneous, I have to make sure there is a, after injection, I have to make sure there is a white color wheel. There is a white color wheel, which is above five. That means six to 10 mm, which should be about six to 10 mm. If it is less than that means that's not valid. It has to be with the tuberculin series after injecting, you have to see a white color veil that is six to 10 mm should be there. Then only it's valid, okay? Then after that, after 48 to after 48 to 72 hours, I'll tell the patient to come and I will check and I will measure it. So when I measure, it should be either less than 5 mm or it is 5 to 9 mm or more than or equal to 10 mm, right? More than 10 mm. It should be more than 10 mm. So I will measure and I'll put the direct thing, okay? So if it's more than 10 mm, means it is positive. It's a positive, right? Now let's go to the question. Yeah, now let's go to the question. I'm sorry, yeah. Uh, it's the intradermal, uh, intra I'm sorry, I said subcutaneous, sorry, it's intradermal, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, it's intradermal, okay, uh, even your BCG vaccine is also intradermal, okay, BCG vaccine also intradermal, tuberculin is also intradermal, and moreover what, this tuberculin uh, is which type of hypersensitive, type, type 4, type 4 hypersensitivity reaction tuberculin along with the lepramine, okay, type 4 hypersensitivity reaction, that also don't forget, okay, Montotex. Or tuberculin. Montotex is otherwise called tuberculin test also. Tuberculin, tuberculin test. So there's a few things that, you know, just to revise. Yeah. So intradermal test using a purified protein. One tuberculin unit, 0 0.5 ml. Yes, it's right. Tuberculin syringe is used. Yes, always prefer tuberculin syringe only. After injection, a pale wheel. Yes, should be. No. See, I told you. It shouldn't be less than 6 mm. So this is wrong. So this, uh, uh, I'm sorry, I should. One second. This uh, I mark the thing that they have asked for right answer. No, so I have to take this. Okay, now, yeah. So, yeah. So the this is right. This is right. So my uh, then other one is if the area of induration more than ten mm, then it's positive. Definitely yes. That's what we said positive. That is diagnostic for the if it is positive. That is diagnostic for childrens. For children, it is diagnostic. You can say it, the child has TB. Not for the adults. Adults means it is either past infection or present. We don't know. So it's only for epidemiological marker, not the diagnostic marker for adults. Only for children, it's a diagnostic marker. You know that tuberculosis diagnostic only for children more than 10 mm. 5 to 9 is doubtful. Less than 5 is negative. Less than 5 is it is negative. Okay. So the, my, uh, the answer you should choose doctors will be after injection, the pale wheel is 3 mm is wrong. See, reading also it should be above 5. The wheel also should be above 5. That is 6 to 10 mm. So remember that. So similar, right? After 48 hours, reading is also above 5. The initial after injection also it should be above 5. That means 6 to 10 mm. So these all are few things easy to remember. So clue. Okay. Right. Now next question. This is again a gyne with uh, integrated with the uh, micro integrated with the gyne question was also asked. And it's a very nice question. A female, 25 year female with the infertility issues. She, she was visiting gyne OPD. A histosulfingography histo was done, which revealed an irregular outline of uterine cavity and a rigid fallopian tube with nodulations, okay? And the picture was not given. The picture, I uh, took it from the internet, okay? So um, uh, they, they mean to say this, the irregular uterine was, uterine was somewhat the uterine, this is the uterine irregular border. And then they say the fallopian tube, this is the fallopian tube nodulation, it was rigid and nodulation. So whenever this type of things, you know, any rigid, chronic, you know, comes in, it is what? It is your tuberculosis, definitely tuberculosis, no doubt in it, okay? Uh, there are a lot of some tobacco pouch, fallopian tube. There are a lot of lots of names. But remember, anything like this, when the border is discreted, because TB is the most, one of the most common cause of infertility in females in India. Uh, usually TB is most common, fallopian tube only. Fallopian tube is the most common site for uh, TB. But again, yeah, it can be anywhere. So it's a genital TB. The answer is genital TB. Genital herpes, not at all. Genital herpes means you have what? You have a painful vesicles. Genital herpes, you have painful vesicles will be seen. Not this, it'll be painful. Syphilis may you see what painless ulcer. Painless ulcer would be seen. That is called what? Heart chancre. Not this. 
Gonorrhea may you what do you say? Gonorrhea is common for men more. In female, usually it's, if it's there, that should be a discharge. It's more basically a discharge. Yeah, I'm not saying not female also will have, but then men, it's urethra, so the pain is very severe for men and easily he comes with this white color uh, seed like discharge. Okay. So, but in gonorrhea, so that's what. So, this type of chronic discontinuation comes, that is tuberculosis. Okay. Now, cholesterol. Cholesterol is also more uh, uh, integrated with the surgery question. So, what is a cholesterol abscess? <coughs> Excuse me. Cholesterol abscess. Whenever you see any abscess like this in your neck region, the first thing, if it's not an acute one, if it's not an acute one, and usually patients say it's there for many months, it gives a long history, it gives, usually gives a long history. And this type of thing, and they usually it's painless, you know, usually they say it's painless. Sometimes you're going to, you, you say it's a cold abscess, you know, cold abscess. There is a difference because in cold abscess, the abscess just remaining inside. In cholesterol, what happened? It forms a connection. It, from the uh, cold abscess, it forms a connection. It comes to the skin. Okay, like this. So this is usually in your neck region. It happens. So that's what cholesterol we call. Whenever again, cholesterol abscess, cold abscess comes again, you think about your TB. Okay, not streptosodium. These are rare. These are you will be acute in, even if it happens, it's acute. And if it's acute more, it'd be staphylococcus also, streptococcus also, and possible commodities. Say. But this is just a cold stud abscess. So when a cholesterol stud abscess means it is a tuberculosis. This type of fancy name comes from example, port spine, also TB. So these type of fancy, fancy names, anything comes from that is usually tuberculosis. Okay, yeah. Now, which of the following statement is false regarding the false regarding cysticercosis? You know cysticercosis. Cysticercosis happens. Uh, before going this, you know, cysticercosis is what basically tenius oleum. It usually happens because of tenius oleum. Normally, tenius oleum, when you eat the pork meat, when we eat the pork meat, larva in the pork meat, it goes inside and causes us what? It causes the te intestinal teniasis. But some cases, we don't, many of the vegetarians are getting this cysticercosis. Why? Because not the pork meat, but contaminated water, contaminated water or salad or food, contaminated salad where egg of the tenia is present. Okay, you understand. When the egg is present, whenever here in Delhi, they used to in a Yamuna River, you know, usually from that side, wherever this green vegetables are grown and it comes from there to the market, when we don't wash it properly, even sometimes we put still that, uh, you know, the egg reminds them that you intake it. When you take the egg, you intake what happened when you tenia, that egg, what happened? It goes into the intestine and then there it hatches into larva and that larva, it goes to where? To the blood and it goes, reaches where the brine, muscles, and eyes anywhere it goes like this so that is the egg is a culprit for and that that cysticercosis can be brain neurocysticercosis or it must it, it can be subcutaneous nodule or it can be muscle or it can be eye anywhere so that's what it is very very common you understand so the cysticercosis okay let me go to the picture to be more even better then we come back so one oh did i miss that picture oh yeah i didn't write that okay so the idea is very simple uh, i'm going to write it here very simple you you eat a pork, you eat a pork meat. In the pork meat, meat there is larva. That is the cysticer, we call it the cysticer, cysticerci larva only. When you eat, it goes to the GIT and it causes what? It causes the intestinal, the normal intestinal teniasis. Usually manifest with abdomen pain, diarrhea, intestinosis. But when you drink the contaminated water, when you drink a contaminated water or food, which has the egg of the tenia solium. This is all we're talking about tenia solium. Tenia solium is a pork, right? Pork, pork meat. It's a pork meat. Ah, first one. When a contaminated water food, you're taking the egg, that goes into the GIT. It hatches into the larva. That is the cysticerca larva, cysticerci larva. And that larva, what happened? It's a sort of like an auto infection, only, right? With an auto infection. Cysticerca larva, it goes and deposits in your brain to the blood. It goes and deposits in the brain or in the muscle or in the subcutaneous tissue or under the skin, subcutaneous tissue, subcutaneous tissue, or it goes into the eye. When it goes into the brain, we call this neurocysticercosis. And neurocysticercosis is the most cysticercosis. And neurocysticercosis is, if you remember, it's the most common cause of what? Most common cause of your, uh, one of the most common cause of what then? Uh, Caesar. Caesar, the most common cause of Caesar in India. Most common cause of Caesar in children. Okay. Now let's talk about it. So see here. So the options are like this. Uh, yeah. Huh. So they said subcutaneous cysticercosis is most common percentage. Subcutaneous cysticercosis. Oh, listen. Subcutaneous is most no. 
the most common manifestation is usually in the brain the cysticercosis curve the most common manifestation is brain in that most common is the in that most common is the, let me change the pen color it's better uh, okay most common is the neurocysticercosis in that neurocysticercosis most common is the seizure so not subcutaneous but subcutaneous there so this is this is a, this is a, this is the right answer so this is a false statement let's wait Seizure is the most common symptom. X definitely yes. We just told one of the most common cause seizure. Whenever you see seizure in children, you do a CT. You always see a neurocystic portability. That's an easy day. Okay. Cerebral signs or occur when the larva dies. Yes, usually when the larva is dies, usually after five fifteen five to uh, dies in the brain. Usually after five to ten years. Yes. Cerebral signs usually when the cyst is not broken, just stagnant, nothing will happen. Only when this new cyst breaks up and then the you know the, the larva thing comes out. Then only you have the cerebral signs manifestation. Okay, that's right. Prasicondyle, just now we do all the platyl methods, all the tenuous cestodes, the tape forms. Okay, you, you give out prasicondyle. So that's also right. Just we spoke. We give bristles, flat bristles, yeah, to cestodes and uh, trematodes, everything except echinococcosis. So prasicondyle is right. So your uh, wrong answer is subcutis. Subcutis is not the most common one. Your neurosis is the most common one. Okay. So that's one question. Okay. So tenuous volume ki yaad kalena. If the larva is entering, you will get intestinal teniosis. If your egg is entering, you will get what? You get the cystic, you get the cystic sarcosis. That is, I'm going to write cystic sarcosis. And your cystic sarcosis can be brain or subcutaneous or muscle or anywhere. Okay. But the most common side is brain. So neurosis is sarcosis is the most common one. Question. And then muscle subcutaneous tissue everywhere. Okay, you can you can go anywhere. Okay, yes. Next, oral polio vaccine. What about the oral polio vaccine? Now you know oral polio vaccine associated with the polio myelitis. We know oral polio vaccine. We have uh, we, when you talk about oral polio vaccine strain, we have one, two, we have one, we have two, three. So which is the, usually which is the con which vaccine strain may there is risk of. Uh, you know, polio myelitis. When you you give the, you take the vaccine, oral polio, and then you get polio itself. That is very high in your OPV3. <laughs> Excuse. This is something you have to know by heart. One is the most common, most common, uh, which is the most common cause of all the epidemics, whatever happens, the most common cause of all the epidemics, and it's most common also. Two is the most antigenic type, most antigenic type, okay, highly antigenic type. And where your three is the uh, it causes the vaccine associated polio myelitis. Okay. Vaccine associated polio myelitis. That's it. Okay. So, answer is your three. That's it. Yeah. Next one. Another interesting question here. Uh, the treatment of pregnant lady exposed to chickenpox patient. So, a lady is coming to you. Uh, she's saying that she got exposed to a She's saying that I got exposed to a chicken. Uh, I got exposed to a chickenpox patient. So, what should I do? So what you will do? She's already, she's just pregnant and what you have to do? So the first thing is, what are the options we have? We we can give her the immunoglobin. We can give virus zoster in immunoglobin. We can give acyclovir, right? Acyclovir. And we can give vaccine also, right? But what is the vaccine we have? Vaccine is the, okay, we say always when you get chicken pox, you say, okay, chicken is delicious. You say, okay. But okay is what? Okay is basically, yeah, it's a live or it's a, uh, yeah, I'm sorry, yeah. It's a live vaccine. It's a live vaccine. Can we give any live vaccine to the pregnant lady? Not. That is sort of out. So, okay. Okay is a live chicken. Okay is a live chicken. Remember, okay virus is a live chicken. You know, like you eat the live chicken. Okay, not the dead chicken, live chicken. So, okay, it's a live vaccine. So, this is not given. So, but you can do what? Immunoglobin and acyclovir. So, your option may check vaccine means it's out. So, vaccine is out, out, out. So, this is not there. So, what about only acyclovir is not enough. Okay, because it can cause severe problem. So, usually you give what? You give the, you give immunoglobin plus acyclovir. That's it. Okay. That is one important thing. And when you talk about this is during any time of pregnancy, during the whole pregnancy course, she can have. Okay. And you know, usually when she gets the earlier pregnancy, she can get what? Congenital. There can be congenital varicella syndrome. Congenital. If she gets chicken pox, there will be congenital varicella syndrome. Right. Congenital varicella syndrome. In congenital varicella syndrome, what happens if it's in the early stage of a pregnancy, if she gets it, she is going to be in trouble. What are the trouble? So the troubles are, the troubles are, she'll get the, you know, limb hypoplasia. There is something called limb hypoplasia. Limb hypoplasia plus psychiatrical, psychiatrical skin lesions, scarred skin lesions. These are the common one. Yeah. 
hypoplasia. Limb hypoplasia, psychiatric skin lesions, psychiatrical or scar skin lesions are common. Psychiatrical skin lesions, okay, scar. It's basically a scar skin lesion. So these are the common ones, okay, in conjunctivism. Another thing is that when just uh, before five days, before five days, delivery, before five days or after two days of delivery, before five days and after two days of delivery, if mother gets chicken pox, if she gets chicken pox, then what you have to do? You have to give immunoglobulin. You have to give varicella zoster virus immunoglobulin to the neonate. Remember that. That's very, very important. If it is more than that time, no problem. Because uh, before fight, no problem. It's already the uh, antibody must have, you know, developed and it has crossed with the child. So no problem. But in this period, delivery of five days, just before five days of delivery or two days after delivery, make sure IV immunoglobin is given to the neonate. This is also one question they can ask. That's it. Okay. This is much about the pregnancy related chicken box car. Okay. Yeah. Now next one. Uh, now here, if you see this question, which of the following is true regarding Kaisenur forest disease? KFD is Kaisenur forest disease. I'll write it here now. It's also called Kaisenur forest disease. Huh. I'm sorry. I'm Kaisenor, I think I made a mistake. Kaisenor forest disease. Spellings are terrible. Yeah, Kaisenor forest disease. At least this you should know. So Kaisenor forest disease, before going to the Kaisenor forest disease, you know the story. Uh, Kaisenor is basically where? Kaisenor, Kaisenor, Asanor, Mysore, Bangalore, they all come in which state? Sur, Sur, all the Sur, Sur, na? Asanor, Mysore, Bangalore comes which state? Karnataka. The name itself has a clue. Karnataka. Right? Or if you remember, forget K. Karnataka. Even your KFG movie also Karnataka only. Okay. So uh, anyway, all this KK Karnataka it takes in Karnataka. So Karnataka. That's one clue. And then uh, yeah, usually forest means Karnataka means forest. Forest means which is more common. If you go to Karnataka, any Karnataka forest, the main thing which you spot will be the monkeys. Monkeys, monkeys, monkeys. Everywhere monkeys. Okay. And forest is always hard, no? So what will be the hard tick? Hard tick is the main reason. Okay, and then this KFT virus come, this Koisinor forest disease ka virus is transmitted by the uh, this uh, heart tick only. Heart tick and monkeys are amplifiers. They amplify the infection. Heart tick say it will kick it. But one more thing, don't forget, we have, uh, uh, we have the uh, reservoirs. Reservoirs are basically the rodents and squirrels. Yeah, rodents and squirrels. You remember rodents, R for R. Right. But the amplifier is the monkeys or the amplifiers, okay? And heart tick. Okay, this is the important thing in Koisner forest disease. You have to remember. Okay, Koisner forest. Koisner is basically a Mysore. Old, it's a old name was Koisner, Koisner, but now it become a Mysore, okay? I might, if my pronunciation is wrong, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, now see, which is true. Commonly seen in North East State? No. K for K, K for Karnataka. So, it's not possible. Wrong. Monkeys or amplifiers? Monkeys or amplifiers? Yes, it sounds right. So let's put a tick here. Transmit by soft tick? No, hard tick. It is not soft tick. And you also don't forget, hard tick, as many times they ask this question, hard tick causes other diseases also. What are the diseases, remember? Tularemia, babesiosis, babesiosis, and Lyme's. Lyme's disease. And this KFT now. Now KFT also comes. Okay. So how I remember? Heart tick. Oh, not only that. Even your rocky mountain fever. Rocky mountain fever. Okay. Tick tull baby. Tick tull baby with lime. You know. Tick tull baby with lime. Okay. Tick the baby with lime. Okay. And then KFD. If it is a forest, it is hard. Poisonous forest disease. And rocky mountain. Mountain. Both are hard. So hard. Hard, hard, hard. All this hard, hard will come. Soft tick doesn't cause much disease. So even don't worry. Or most of the disease caused by hard tick. Important is caused by hard tick only. Yeah. But then still, just still remember. Okay. So these are the things you have to remember. That's it. Okay. Monkey sample finished. Okay. Now next question. 
the drug used to treatment of listeria monocytogen this is this is this you should directly know only this is an option uh, but again if you listeria monocytogen if you remember what is the important thing to remember it, it is a, it is a only gram positive gram positive bacilli that causes meningitis neonatal meningitis in neonatal meningitis okay that is a clue one clue frequently asked and listeria means you know what motility Tum tummy listener tumbling motility tumbling or differential motility differential motility this was this is a characteristic question they asked differential motility so now what happened apart from asking this neonatal meningitis tumbling or differential motility differential means you know they're usually uh, active in 26 degrees celsius but then at a higher temperatures they become lazy they become non motile 35 degree 36 degree they become non motile Tumbling is a tumbling motility. So I always remember tum list, tummy list, you know, a tummy list and tenny I call. Anton is the test we do here. Anton, okay, Anton test. So these are the common things for list management. But now for us important is that what, what is the treatment? Treatment, ka, usual combination is ampicillin and genta is the usual combination. Ampicillin and genta is sufficient. Septroaction, no use at all. It will not, it is not used in the listed monocytes. Okay, it doesn't have any farak, right? So it's forgot, it's, a, it's totally different case. So, uh, ampicillin, uh, gentamicin, sulfamethoxazole also used. The next option is sulfamethoxazole. So your option is 2, 3, 4, only, not 1. 1 is wrong. Okay? That's this is the easy question. Listeria, always ampicillin and gentamicin. That's it. Okay? Yeah. Okay. We came to the end. Right. Okay. So these are the things. I'm just making a thing. Yeah. Yeah. So thank you doctors so these are the questions asked in the uh, the cms the upsc cms exam so a lot of questions are standard and i see this there is chance of these questions can be asked in your uh, neat or next or fmg the same question same little bit uh, you know data meta they must have turned a little bit otherwise you will get it so go through it once uh, again and then all the best for upcoming exams thank you so much